dives to the 30 and knocked down at the 33 yard line. Rutgers will come up on offense first. Strada Knights moving right to left on your screen. And they'll start with quarterback Tom Charver. There's a look at TK Dorsey as he ran the kickoff back. Michigan State with a weird squib kick to start things off. The Spartans in their road, white uniforms trimmed with green. And here we go. First down and 10, Rutgers at the 34-yard line. High formation behind Tarver. James Jenkins, the tight end, the man in motion. Tarver drops the football on the snap, and then a penalty marker as well. All kinds of confusion on that first play. Well, you're going to get movement in the defensive line as the man over the nose. That time, William Reese jumped the gun. The penalty will go against Michigan State. Big break for Rutgers. It's offsides against Michigan State. And the Spartans will be backed up five yards. So Rutgers with a first down and five. No, this is the position Rutgers wants to find themselves in. They cannot be forced into second, third, and long situations. Jenkins in motion again. High formation. Here's the pitch outside. Bailey turns it up. And picks up about three yards as he gets to the 42 and is brought down there. So the Spartans play it well. And Rutgers on offense. Offensive line looks like this. Broadbent is the center. Mitchell and Owens on the left side. Chris and Forbes on the right side. James Jenkins is the tight end. That's been a solid offensive line so far for the Knights. We'll give you the backfield after this play. Pleasant surprise for Rutgers is the performance of their offensive line. They've been doing a good job up there. Split backs this time behind Tarver on a second down and one. Tarver back to throw, fires and right in the hands of Jim Guarantano. That's a 10 point shot to make, and it goes incomplete. Here's the offensive backfield. Guarantano the split end, Melton the flanker, Dorsey and Bailey behind quarterback Tom Tarver. That's a good looking play for Rutgers. They're going to have to do a lot of that. Michigan State tends to play a, a deep zone, Lou. They're not going to give you the big play, so then, therefore, you have to take what the defense will give you, and that's that underneath pass. Play one problem, James Tarkino's going to hold on to it. Third down and one at the 43 yard line. High formation again. Here's Murphy in motion. Here's the give off the ball. Bailey bounces off, and he still struggles ahead for what might be first down yardage. Terrific individual effort by William Bailey, and we want to laud that, but you also have to give some credit to the Michigan State defense. There you see their defensive line coming up on the grass. The crowd booing because of the spot. Lou, why don't you give them the defensive line? Confer and Johnson, the defensive ends. Wilson and Reese, two big defensive tackles. Carlos Jenkins is the strong outside linebacker. And he's a good one. Turned the ball inside against Notre Dame last week. First down, Rutgers. Big play by Bailey after he was initially hit behind the line of scrimmage. Well, the young walk-on has really, really played well and has worked his way up from sixth on the depth chart to first. I want to finish my point about the Michigan State defense. They put helmets on the football each and every play. You can't quit against this defense. We'll give you the rest of the defense after this next play. First down and 10, Rutgers at the 45-yard line. Put back behind Carver and back to throw. Fires a little wide to the screen to Melton. He's at the 50, comes it upfield with a brilliant move. And has a, another Rutgers first down, it would appear, at the Michigan State 45. So another little quick pass by Tom Carver out on the flank to Melton, a big receiver. Here's the rest of the backfield. Lou, give it to the folks. Rest of the defense, Chuck Bullock is the middle linebacker. Edwards, a good weak outside linebacker. Murray Haller, Aya Quinello, and, of course, uh, Freddie Wilson in the rest of that defensive secondary. Rutgers on the march, first down and 10 at the Michigan State 45 to give the Dorsey off tackle. And he picks up about three down to the 42-yard line. Confer, the defensive end, makes the stop. That's the kind of play that Rutgers has to get to work for them for a little bit more than two or three yards, which they got on that play. This defense, the stunting 4-3, is set up to protect the middle linebacker to make him a star, Lou. He has to be able to range between the tackles. If Rutgers can get out and get, get bullet blocked, they can get some success off tackle. They may make their offense go. 
second down, call it eight at the 42 yard line of Michigan State. Carver back to throw again as Dorsey makes the catch and drops the ball. They may call it a fumble, and yes, the Spartans, no, it's complete. It took forever for the official to make the call. Well, the side Why judge did take that long. I don't know. The side judge was right there and did not indicate the back judge finally said incomplete pass. Todd Murray on the hit. Watch it on the replay here. I, don't, I think that's a fumble. I think that should have been a fumble. And remember, in college football, you can advance a fumble now off the carpet. Years ago, you could not do that. I disagree with that call, Lou. I think that was a catch, a great hit, and a fumble. Rutgers gets what would appear to be an early break. Third down and eight at the 43-yard line. Rutgers needs a lot more yardage to get in field goal range. They have not been good in the field goal category this season, only one of six. Third down and eight, split receivers to the left side. One lone setback behind Tarver. He's back to throw, has protection, fires, has a receiver. First down, Rutgers. Warren Tano makes the catch. Freddie Wilson makes the stop. Oh, nice looking pass play. First and foremost, good protection by the offensive line. And then a great job by James Guarantano to run a good route and then come back to the football, Lou. That is good execution by the Rutgers offense. And a nice looking play. Guarantano sitting down in the seam in the zone. First down and 10 at the 32-yard line. Rutgers again, same formation. Twin receivers to the right. And Randy Jackson, the lone receiver to the left. They'll run it left. Antoine Moore makes a couple of stutter step moves as he gets across the 30 to the 29-yard line. Coming up to make the tackle with Alan Haller, weak side cornerback, and also William Reese, a big defensive tackle, sophomore 6'1", 242. Very quick defense. Very big, very physical, very quick, therefore very good, Lou. Rutgers is going to have trouble running wide against this defense. I think they'll have most success if they run between the tackles. Second down and eight, and Rutgers moving the ball smartly on this first drive. Tarver to throw. Now he's in trouble. Flushed out of the pocket. Fires. Sean Scott makes the catch and is crushed immediately by Chuck Bulo, the middle linebacker. Junior out of Orchard Park, New York, had 18 tackles a week ago against Notre Dame. Let's watch the replay. There's the way a middle linebacker introduces himself, ladies and gentlemen. They want you to know that if you catch the ball over the middle, there will be a price to pay. That is good defense. Third down, and call it six. Tenth play of the drive for the Scarlet Knights. And they've already chewed up about five minutes off the clock. Again, twin receiver split out to the left. Tarver straight back to throw. Has protection. Fires shot and the hit for the first down at the 20-yard line. Nice throw by Tom Tarver. Put it on a frozen rope and a good pattern by Scott. Watch it here. It's just a quick slant in. You have to throw that football with authority. That's what Tom Tarver did. For the first down, Rutgers mixing it up beautifully here on this first drive. A terrific drive for Tarver, four for six, 30 yards. Doing the job, and Rutgers is moving the ball. They have moved to the Michigan State 21-yard line. High formation for the night. Jenkins, the man in motion to tight end. Now they pitch it outside Bailey. Comes in penalty flag on the play. Picked up about two. Carlos Jenkins on the stop. Outstanding linebacker. Last week, 14 tackles against Notre Dame. Let's see what the call is, Lou. I think you might have had someone uh, moving a little bit before the snap. There's Doug Graver. First year at Rutgers, 2-1 and one on the season, 8-6 and six in his brief career. A little procedure with the ball against the Scarlet Knights. So this is the type of situation that the Michigan State defense lives for, though. Now, first and 15, they can put all those defensive schemes, particularly in their line, into play right now because they can gamble quite a bit. They have huge, excellent athletes in the defensive line, and they will stunt continually to try to screw up your blocking pattern. When you put yourself in a situation talking about Rutgers, like 
like this against Michigan State, it, the, the, everything shifts in favor of the defense, Luke. First half, 15. Ball marks at the 26-yard line. Harbor on a draw play. by the Rutgers coaching staff. What do you do to take advantage of a defense's aggressiveness? You throw screens, you run the draw play, and you get excellent running this time out of Antoine Moore. Nice block on the corner by Randy Jackson, which enabled Moore to pick up another three or four yards. That's what Rutgers has to do. Keep, if they can, Michigan State off balance all night. This drive has already queued up nearly six minutes. Second down and two, and the ball is marked at the 13-yard line of the Spartans. Split back behind Carver, quick step throws over the head of Melton. He had to get rid of it quickly because Bobby Wilson, defensive tackle, 6'2", 275, was all over the Rutgers quarterback. Well, look for that play with a slight wrinkle to it a little bit later on, Lou. You're going to see Tarver pump once to Melton. Melton is going to make that fake and then take off into the corner of the end zone. Let's look for that a little bit later in the ballgame. Remember, some of the things that you do now, even though they might be unsuccessful at this moment, help you to set things up later in the game. Rutgers 3-4-3 three three on third down conversions, and they have a big one here. Third down and call it two at the 13. Need to get just inside the 11 for the first down. Here is Tarver back to throw, fires, has a receiver. Inside the five, down to the two. Jimmy Florentano on the catch. Haller makes the stop for the Rutgers first down. But a beautiful throw once again by Tarver. There was no deception. Only one receiver, good play action pass, freezes the linebacker so they has room to throw. But then once again, he puts it on a frozen rope. Little mustard on that one, Lou. Right in the bread basket for Guarantano. Perfect throw by Tom Tarver. Guarantano, two catches, 23 yards. It is first down and goal. Rutgers, they're at the two-yard line. The man in motion is Murphy. Here's the give to Bailey, who bounces up the middle, and that is collared in the backfield by Todd Murray, the strong side cornerback. Six foot, 195-pound sophomore out of Bloomington, Minnesota. Rutgers second down and goal. Lou, this defense is virtually impossible to run against up the gut. They're just too big and too physical in the middle. What you have to do in a situation like that is maybe fake the ball into the middle, then get it off tackle if, it, if possible. They're just too big, too physical in the middle of the line. Rutgers has chewed up nearly half of the first quarter. Second down goal, here's the pitch, Bailey looking to get inside, now bounces back again and cannot get in. He's brought down this time at the three-yard line, might have lost a yard. Freddie Wilson, the strong safety, and William Reese make the tackle. Lou, you've got to get a push up front. Now watch this, there are no red shirts moving anybody off the line of scrimmage. Number 96, Bill Johnson at 6'4", 290. Just impossible to move off the line of scrimmage. What might work real well here is if Tarver can fake into the line, put it on his hip, and bootleg to the wide side. Third down and goal. Split backs behind Tarver. Rutgers looking to take the lead. Tarver to throw, it is intercepted. Off the deflection, Chuck Bulo, a middle linebacker, picks it off and Rutgers comes away empty. I don't know, Rutgers looking for a pass interference ball and I might agree with them. Let's watch it on the replay from the end zone camera. Just off our screen, I want to see who Number 20, Todd Murray got a hand on it, but it looked like he got there just a bit early. All right, a break in the action. Seven minutes, 15 seconds remaining in the first. And the score, nothing, nothing.
Road and Track Magazine confirms it. You just can't beat great Dunlop tires. And you can't beat the values on Dunlop at HK Tire on Route 27 in Somerset. HK Tire is New Jersey's largest Dunlop dealer. And they've earned it with price, service, and selection. It's thumbs up all the way with HK, a family car care center with your satisfaction clearly in mind. So get over to HK today. HK Tire, Route 27, Somerset, just moments outside New Brunswick. You just can't beat Dunlop from HK. Under Toro's total coverage guarantee, every single part of this rider is guaranteed for two years or we'll pick it up and fix it free. So, if it doesn't start, that's our problem. If it quits running, that's our problem. In fact, if even the littlest thing goes wrong, that's our problem. That, on the other hand, is your problem. Middlesex Power Equipment, where there are no payments or interest until April 1st, 1991. Michigan State with the football. They're faced with a third down and six. They ran the first two offensive plays into the middle of the line. And Michigan State was supposed, they were supposed to take a break on the field. Frank, our apologies to the folks at home. For some reason, it didn't sync up quite well. Third down and six. Here is Dan Enos, the quarterback, back to throw, has a receiver. Courtney Hawkins takes the catch. He's got a first down at the 40-yard line. Malik Jackson comes over to make the tackle, but it's a big first down for the Spartans. And Michigan State on offense, and this is a good offensive team. Here's the offensive line, and it's a huge line. Pearson, the center, Troy Heaton, and Eric Moten. Moten and Keller, the guards, Heaton and Johnson, the tackles, and Dwayne Young is the big tight end, and he's big, 6'2", 260 pounds. He's the smallest on the offensive line. First down and 10 for the Spartans at the 40-yard line. Rutgers with a great drive, but came up empty, and now Michigan State moving down the field at the 42-yard line. Highland Dixon runs the football for the Spartans. Looks like he's a little shaken up, or he just can't get up. That's what it is. Sean Williams makes the tackle. All right, the rest of that Michigan State offense, Marty Mays shaken up. James Bradley, the split end. Courtney Hawkins, who you saw, fine receiver, the flanker. Rob Roy, the fullback. Tico Duncan, the tailback. And Dan Enos, Enos, E-N-D-E-N-O-S. Dan Enos is the quarterback. 6'1", 194-pound senior out of Dearborn, Michigan. There's Marty Mays, and again, he looks to be shaken up. And Michigan State, Lou, will look to run the football first. They have an excellent tandem of tailbacks. Tico Duckett usually starts the game, and he splits time almost equally, almost exactly a number of carries with Highland Hickson. You've got speed and power molded into one. It's sort of like a two-headed monster at the tailback. Duckett, literally the fastest of the Spartans. And that's saying something since, for example, Courtney Hawkins, the wide receiver, runs 4-3. And then you bring in Highland Hickson, who is a 220-pound tailback, who runs at you like a hammer on an anvil. That's a great one-two punch at tailback. Second down and seven at the 43-yard line. We'll give you the Rutgers defense as soon as we can. Here is the give outside. Good defense by the Knights. Turning in Jamil Jackson and also Rusty Mays. Highland Hickson thrown for a loss. And Michigan State unable to pick up positive yardage that time. Third down and nine. All right, the Rutgers defensive line. You saw Marty Mays was shaken up, but he was the starting nose guard. Miller and Jones, the defensive end. Sean Williams and Elnardo Webster, too. Outstanding outside linebackers. We'll give you the defensive backfield after this play. Third down and eight for the Spartans. Split back behind quarterback Dan Enos. He's back to throw, has protection, fires, has a receiver, but he will be short of first down yardage. Rob Roy, the fullback, makes the catch, but he didn't get enough. The Michigan State likes to throw the fullback, but Rutgers that time playing a soft zone giving Michigan State the underneath stuff. They said, sure, we'll let you catch it for six, but we're gonna come up and hit you because you need eight. Good defense that time by Rutgers, and Rutgers is playing well defensively. So far this year, they are playing very well. Josh Butlin is in to kick it away. He's a 6'5 junior out of Troy, Michigan. It's a high kick, but not a particularly long kick. Fair catch called for, and taken at the 20 yard line by Marshall Roberts and Rutgers will put the ball in play there with three minutes and 43 seconds remaining here. 
in this first quarter. And we'll take a timeout. A timeout on the field. Rutgers in Michigan State. No score. There's no place like home, especially when life is made easier with home improvement ideas from Edison Overhead Door. Visit our convenient showroom where you'll find beautiful styled residential garage doors with the features you'd expect from a quality garage door. Automatic door openers provide the power with performance and safety features that are standard and the advanced options that you want. Installation is done professionally and at your convenience. Takes just a few hours. Home improvement you never thought possible. Brought to you by Edison Overhead Door at the Woodbridge Avenue Highland Park Overpass, Route 1 North, Edison. When my clients call, I respond, always acting in their best interests. When I do business with someone, I like to be treated like I treat my clients. It's nice to discover a dealership that's professional. Thank you, Ray Katina. People who appreciate customer service and bottom line value know that nobody beats Ray Katina. Think Mercedes, think Porsche, think Infinity, think Ray Katina, Route 1, Edison, New Jersey. Rutgers first down and 10 at the 20-yard line. They run it up the middle, and William Bailey, the tailback on the carry, picks up about three or four on the play. Rutgers on that first drive, 16 plays, 62 yards. They chewed up seven minutes and 40 seconds. Tarver was five for nine for 43 yards. That was a great drive. Of course, it ended in the interception. Knights have looked sharp on offense. Yeah, it's important that they look good early, too, because this is a young club, Luke. They will play with more confidence as they play well early in the game. Second down and call it six at the 24. Split backs behind Tarver and the receivers are split out as well. Tarver has time, throws. Melton makes the catch at the 42 and has a first down across the 45 yard line. Todd Murray, the cornerback, makes the tackle, but a successful play for the Knights, 22 yards. Well, Tarver's really reading the defense well. What that was, that was an inverted zone where you had the strong safety covering the short zone with the cornerback dropping way back. But when you do that, Lou, there are little seams in the zone where the transition is made from the, court, from the safety to the cornerback. If the quarterback can read when that's happening, get the ball there, you're gonna have a successful pass play like that one. Knights on the move again. First and 10, Rutgers at their own 47-yard line. And whistles on the play. I think he had two men in motion at the same time. I think the call is going to go against Rutgers. Look to be both Sean Scott and Chris Brantley in motion. No, Rutgers calls a timeout. Maybe, maybe that's why they call the timeout. They seem to be confused. All right, the Knights call timeout. We'll keep it right here. Rutgers is 14 and 19 at Giant Stadium, which is not really a bad record when you consider the mighty foes that the Knights play here at Giant Stadium. Absolutely. They saved this beautiful ballpark for playing their big-time opponents. And I'll tell you right now, they don't get any bigger than this team in green and white here today. This is an excellent ball club. And I think we should make a point here, Lou, that Rutgers playing so well early is a very big sign. A similar situation happened up in Syracuse to Michigan State the other night. Michigan State is a more veteran team than either Syracuse or Rutgers. So the team comes in, think, people think anyway, the team might come in a little bit tentative. The coach has got to get the kids prepared to play well early and say, hey, they put their pants on the same way we do, one leg at a time. Let's go right at them and see what we can do. And if it works, they say, hey, coach, you're right. Well, Rutgers has a first and 10 at their own 47. In case you just tuned in, the Knights have played an excellent first quarter. Tarver back to throw, has plenty of time, fires and intercepted. That time he threw into coverage, and the Spartans have their second interception of the game, and the second pickoff of the game for Chuck Bulo. 51, Carlos Jenkins really made the play by deflecting the pass. Now watch this on the drop back pass, pretty good time for Tarver. He just doesn't read the linebacker in coverage there. Good depth by Carlos Jenkins. He got back into the passing lanes, got the hands up. He's a big, rangy guy at 6'4", 215. Got the hands up, and then Bullock was there to clean up on the interception. That's why Michigan State is such a good defensive ball club. And the Spartans, a pretty good offensive team as well, have the ball for their second possession of this first quarter. I formation, Enos gives second man through. That's a huge hole. 
and across the midfield for good yardage is Highland Hickson is getting a, excuse me, Tico Duckett, 5'10", 185 pound sophomore out of Kalamazoo, 144 yards rushing on the season. Two minutes and five seconds winding down here in the first quarter. No score, Michigan State in Rutgers. Second down, call it two. At the 49, another give off tackle, and right now the Michigan State line blowing some big holes in that Rutgers defense. Duckett again carries the ball, and the Spartans get the first down. Todd Lane, the inside linebacker, comes up to make the play. Lou, I had the opportunity to watch Michigan State twice, once against Syracuse and then last week against Notre Dame, and I try to take notes as to what their blocking patterns were. It was the easiest job of note-taking I've ever had. They don't do anything fancy. They're big, they're physical, and they come right at you, and that's what they're doing to Rutgers right now. Enos drops the ball. Now he's in trouble, and he'll take the loss. Almost got back to the line of scrimmage. Malik Jackson and Leonardo Webster combined on the tackle. Just a mix-up of, of the handoff right there. Well, broken play and a good job by the Rutgers defense to get on Enos right away because he can run the football. There are many times, Lou, that he'll roll out not looking to pass at all. He'll just tuck it away and then take off up the field with it. So Rutgers has to be on their toes, even in a broken play situation because Enos is a good enough athlete to get positive yardage out of it. Enos is seventh on the all-time Spartan list for total yardage, 2,511 yards coming in. Enos looks over the Rutgers defense, second down and 11, the Scarlet fans are calling for defense. He's back to throw, Hawkins is wide open, and makes the catch. Looks like he might have trapped it at first. Marshall Roberts covers, and the ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage, I believe. Well, Malik Jackson, excuse me, Jamil Jackson, the linebacker, Malik's brother, with a pretty good rush, got his hands up, got a little piece of the football, but you, you, you got to give credit where credit is due. Courtney Hawkins is one of the fastest men on this Michigan State team, and one of the fastest guys in the country, legitimate 4-3 uh, sprinter. Marshall Roberts has got to respect that kind of speed, especially when he's isolated in single coverage with Hawkins. Hawkins, an outstanding receiver, and it's third down and five. He knows to throw, rolls out, fires, has a receiver. That's Bradley who makes the catch. Maybe, excuse me, Brian Howard. Bradley makes the catch inside the 30-yard line. Ron Allen makes the tackle. Once again, Bradley with excellent speed. Another good receiver. Great one-two tandem on the wideouts for Michigan State. And that's the end of the first quarter. The score, Michigan State nothing, Rutgers nothing. The Rutgers division of intercollegiate athletics takes this opportunity. Dear Terry, we saw the Grand Canal this morning. <laughs> Your mother cried. Who would have thought that a couple of Depression-era kids like us would be touring Europe? Larry and Sarah Hilliard are making most of the money they've earned with the help of the NatWest Prime Benefits Club for people 50 and over. This trip has meant so much. Miss you. Love, Dad. The Prime Benefits Club at NatWest. Raising the standards of banking. Thoroughbred Racing at the Meadowland. The Meadowland. We fill the place with winners ten times a night. The pain is in my very, very lower back, and it just Aches. Today, Ray Stewart is trying extra-strength Tylenol gel caps. For pain like his, why take aspirin or ibuprofen when nothing works better than Tylenol gel caps? The pain is totally gone. I have no pain in my back. From now on, I'm going to take Tylenol gel caps for my pain. I truly feel it's amazing. Tylenol gel caps, only from Tylenol. For everyday pain, nothing works better. And for your allergies, now try Tylenol Allergy Sinus. General Business Machines presents the Hewlett-Packard Vectra family of personal computers. Quality performers for any business application. Earn points to win free peripherals. The remarkable LaserJet printer family with the finest 300 dot per inch print quality anywhere. Hewlett-Packard affordable inkjet printers. 
Stop in for a free demonstration of the new DestJet 500 to qualify for the DestJet 500 sweepstakes where you can win a trip for two to Hawaii. General Business Machines is your authorized full-service Hewlett Packard dealer. Take advantage of our extensive inventory and fast delivery today by calling 1-800-339-7723. U.S. number one hobby is celebrating the grand opening of its South Plainfield store. That's U.S. number one hobby for all your hobby needs. Open seven days a week. That's U.S. number one hobby. Call 754-7788. All over Central Jersey, people are staying off the roads, waiting for the end-of-year model clearance at Acura of Somerville. The wait is over. Acura of Somerville is clearing out all their 1990 Legends, all their 1990 Integras, all at the lowest prices of the year. And all with Acura of Somerville extras like free service loaner cars. But hurry, you can only get these end-of-year clearance prices while supplies last. So get back on the road and get big savings at Acura of Somerville's end-of-model year clearance. Acura of Somerville, Route 22 West, Bridgewater. No score as we begin quarter number two, Michigan State and Rutgers. Michigan State quarterback Dan Enos having a fine first quarter. He was four for four for 39 yards. And in case you just tuned in, Rutgers gave Michigan State all they could handle in that first quarter. The Knights drove right down the field, but a costly interception ended that drive. And then a little bit later on, Rutgers also drove pretty significantly. But again, an interception ended it and turnovers have hurt the Knights here in this game. And against a team like Michigan State, you just can't make turnovers. Eno's gonna throw an audible here at the line of scrimmage as Rutgers shifted their defense into a flex style of game. And it works as Tico Duckett with great balance is inside the 15 down to the 11 yard line. Rutgers had overloaded the wide side of the field with a flex style of defense. They brought their linebackers up on the line of scrimmage and they also brought their safeties up. Eno saw it changed the play, came back to the short side of the field, Duckett using his outstanding speed, one step into the secondary. Duckett, five rushes for 33 yards. He already has half the total he had last week against Notre Dame. He had 66 in that one. It's a first down and 10 for Michigan State at the 12. Again, it's Duckett. He's got a huge hole. He's inside the 10, down to the nine yard line. Quick pick up a three or four. Rutgers is going to have to play that kind of defense. We didn't get a chance to talk about it in our opening, but because Michigan State is going to come right at you, here's the isolation play. The fullback that time on Malik Jackson, the strong safety, clearing the hole. They get a good push at the line of scrimmage, but Rutgers did a pretty good job of jamming it up for only a two-yard gain. Rutgers is going to have to put a lot of red shirts on the line of scrimmage to stop State. There's a second down and call it eight. They mark the ball at the 10. Here's the give to Hickson, who is upended at the nine yard line. Looks to be Malik Jackson who came up to make the tackle. Jackson had an excellent game last week against Penn State. 16, excuse me, six tackles last week. is 16 on the season. Well, he's a terrific, terrific young player. Was trained as a linebacker in high school and hits like one even though he's playing strong safety. What Enos is going to have to do for Michigan State now is to fake into the line because the Rutgers safeties are playing so tight and go up top with play action. Here's a third down and seven at the nine yard line. Enos straight back to throw. Now he's flushed out of the pocket. Looking to throw. He fires. Is it caught? That's the question. No. Incomplete is the ball. for James Bradley, and we, seriously, we had to wait until the referee made the signal because we could not see. Just too far away in the far corner of the end zone, and the ball was thrown so low, the only question was going to be whether or not he had trapped it. Good defense. Watch the nice rush here by Scott Miller, number 99. Gets right in Enos' face, so he can't throw a real tight pass, and then good defense by the Rutgers defender to get right in Bradley's face. That was a good defensive series by Rutgers. John Langlow is in to kick a field goal. He's four for four on the season. It will be a 26-yard attempt. Kick is up. Kick is good. A break in the action. 
13 minutes and four seconds remaining in the second quarter. Michigan State three and Rutgers nothing. Need to rent construction equipment? Call Trico Rentals. Backhoes, dozers, excavators, aerial work platforms, we've got those and more. Trico offers daily, weekly, or monthly rental plans, whatever suits your needs. Backed by 35 years of experience, equipment is delivered to your job in first-rate condition and ready to go every time. Because at Trico, uptime is the only time that counts. For the location near you, dial 1-800-GO-TRICO. It takes more than concrete and steel to keep New Jersey's economy strong. It takes resources, commitment, and teamwork. At First Fidelity, we're proud to have helped New Jersey become the home of hundreds of major corporations and two professional football teams. Our commitment to teamwork goes far beyond the gridiron. It comes through in everything we do. Let First Fidelity show you how we can team up to make great things happen for you. John Langlow has just kicked a 26-yard field goal, and Michigan State leads it by the score of 3-0. The drive for the Spartans, nine plays, 49 yards. Time elapsed, four minutes, 26 seconds. Langlow again with the 26-yard field goal, and he kicks off here. Again, it's like a line drive squibber that Ron Allen has at the five. He's to the 20, to the 25, spins and takes a, a vicious hit, and they call the play dead, even though Allen is still fighting, and now we have some fisticuffs down at the 26-yard line, and both benches were clear. Uh, the coaches will score order to that quickly. I'll tell you, I, I don't... I, I don't wish to be a, an antagonist by any means, but football fights are the most fun you could possibly get into. How could you possibly hurt anybody, Lou? You're wearing pads on every square inch of your body. It's ridiculous. Great hit this time by Freddie Wilson, the strong safety who's also playing on the specials, and Ron Allen just won't quit. Rutgers will have it first down and 10. You know, the turnover hurt Rutgers. On offense, we talked about it. Rutgers has to play virtually error-free football, which they did almost in the first quarter. Almost doesn't count in football. Only Tiffany Wicks, horseshoes, and hand grenades, Lou. First down and 10 at the 27-yard line. Here's the give up the middle. William Bailey carries the ball. He's got a neat three- or four-yard pickup. That time, something interesting, you saw Tim Pernetti, the tight end, go in motion, and then he kind of dives right into the middle of the line and throws the block. Well, they're going to have to get as many blockers into the fray as possible because Michigan State just so physical, very, very big in the interior part of the line, and very physical, and they stunt a lot. So you need to area block, Lou, and you've got to get a lot of red shirts leading up into the hole for a play to be successful. Second down, call it six at the 31-yard line. Three-nothing Michigan State. 12 minutes remaining in this second quarter. Here's another quick give up the middle to Bailey. And he's close to first down yardage, but there's a penalty marker on the play. That's uh, a bad sign. The back judge threw it right into where the action was. That, that's that got to be a holding call, Lou, without even seeing it. Whenever it goes into the pile like that, you can bet your bottom dollar. And it is holding against the Scarlet Knights, so this will back Rutgers up. See, now this puts Rutgers in a second and long situation. These Michigan State defensive linemen, <laughs> they still get a little blood in the corner of their eye because they're sensing fresh meat right now. And it's got to be scary for Tom Tarver, I'll tell you. It's, it's a very difficult situation for the offensive linemen because the defensive linemen are, are going to ignore any kind of play fake, any kind of run fake whatsoever, and just go after the quarterback. And the holding call takes Rutgers back to the 20-yard line. I'll tell you, Lou, I'm sorry, Lou, go ahead. Excuse me, Frank, the Knights are faced with a second and 16. I'll tell you something after this play. Let's see what happens right here. Something about Michigan State. Twin receiver split out, left side. Tarver, one setback. He's back to throw, has protection. Jenkins, the big tight end, makes a great catch at the 45 and brought down at the 47. Oh, good look at playing a nice fearless catch. Good protection that time by the Rutgers offensive line. Once again, 
there's the seam in the zone. You see the safety coming in too late, and he drops it just beyond the middle linebacker. That's beautiful execution by Tom Tarver. 27-yard reception by tight end James Jenkins. That's his 12th of the season. Skipping on the sideline a little bit there, though. They seem to have twisted an ankle. First down 10 are you at the 49-yard line. Here's Antoine Moore, who's got some room, and then tight ropes up the sideline across the 45 to the 43. Again, it's Chuck Bulo on the tackle, but Moore picks up about eight yards on the carry. Good vision by Antoine Moore as he bounced it outside. Good block in the center that time by Travis Broadbent against big Bobby Wilson. Remember, what Rutgers has to try to do, because Michigan State has such excellent athletes in their defensive line, is not try to take them in one way in particular to, to influence block, and then the back has to read that block and go where the defender ain't, if you will. Second down, and call it two at the 42. Oh. Tarver to throw. Now he's flushed out of the pocket. He'll run. He's got the first down as he angles towards the sideline and takes it out of bounds inside the 35. Nice looking play by Tom Tarver. He went to pass first. He ran when all his receivers were covered, and the pass protection broke down. That's what Doug Graber wants to see from Tom Tarver. Even though he's a good runner, he wants him to look, pass first, run second. Rutgers' best quarter this season has been the second. They've scored 28 points in the second quarter. And they're looking for some points right here. First down and 10 at the 34-yard line. They trail 3-0. Again, here's the delay to Antoine Moore running hard inside the 30 and brought down at the 29-yard line. Carlos Jenkins makes the tackle. Antoine Moore is the transfer from Georgia Tech, 5'11", 205-pound junior out of Hempstead, New York. He has a 6.1 yard per carry average. Well, he's a burst kind of runner, Lou. He has that quick acceleration. He sees the hole. He gets into it in a hurry. He doesn't pussyfoot around. When he sees it, he takes the opportunity and goes. Second down and five at the 28-yard line. Clock stopped with 11-12 remaining in the second. Tarver to throw. Now he's flushed out of the pocket, and he'll run. He's got a first down, takes a hit, and flies out of bounds. Yard line, Carlos Jenkins again makes the tackle, but not before the Knights get a first down. Now look at Tarver, he's looking, he's looking, the man covered, then he sees the gap and he uses his speed to get outside. Nice job by Jenkins to get back in the play, but an even better job of Tarver to find the seam, get up in there in a hurry and get the first down. He's not scared of anybody right now. It is first down and 10, Rutgers at the Michigan State 27 yard line. And the crowd into it here at Giant Stadium. Here's the gift to Bailey. He's in trouble. Shakes a couple of tacklers, but he'll be brought down at the line of scrimmage. Dixon Edwards destroyed that play. Well, that's the kind of play that Rutgers is just going to have a hard time running against Michigan State because they're outside backers. I'm talking about Jenkins and Edwards are just so good. They're so very, very mobile. They're quick and they're strong. Hey, Notre Dame couldn't run wide against Michigan State. It's unlikely that Rutgers will be able to do so. But you've got to mix it in once in a while just to give them that look to keep the defense honest, Lou. Second down, 10 at the 22. There's a look at Rutgers quarterback Tom Tarver. Straight back to throw this time. Now he's in trouble. It up for grabs, but throws it out of bounds. Good, good job, actually, by Tarver. I said he threw it up for grabs, but he really didn't. He threw it out of bounds. And Wilson, Bobby Wilson, 6'2", 275, was riding on his back. That's like loading a refrigerator on your back. You, better, you better believe it. And, he, and Wilson is lightning quick at 275 pounds. Last year, as a reserve, he had four sacks. I started to say before about the Michigan State defensive line, the best athletes on the college level from, from a defensive lineman standpoint that I have seen so far this year. They're big, they're mean, they're ugly, and they're quick. And that's not that's not a derogatory statement, that's a compliment. Third down and 10 at the 22-yard line. Tarver to throw. Has a receiver. Florentano just out of his reach at the 10-yard line. Would have been a terrific catch. Heavily covered. And Rutgers will try to tie this game up as John Benestat trots out 
to attempt the field goal. As we mentioned, this has not been Rutgers' strong suit this year. The Knights just one of six, but Benestat does have the one field goal. It was a 39-yarder, and coincidentally, so is this, a 39-yard attempt by Benestat, the freshman from Boca Raton, Florida. The kick is up. It is. Freshman place kicker has tied it up. A break in the action. Nine minutes and 45 seconds remaining in the second. Michigan State three, Rutgers three. Tonight, thoroughbred racing at the Meadowlands. Fill the place with winners 10 times a night. U.S. number one hobby is celebrating the grand opening of its South Plainfield store. It's U.S. number one hobby for all your hobby needs. Open seven days a week. That's U.S. number one hobby. Call 754-7788. We're all tied up at three. Rutgers and Michigan State with 9.45 remaining in the second quarter. The drive for Rutgers, nine plays, six via the run, three by the air, 52 yards in all. Shoot up three minutes and 15 seconds. Ended in the 39-yard field goal by John Benestat and Rutgers is right there with the heavily favored Spartans so far. They've done a lot of the things that they have to do to win. They hadn't turned the ball over. They may be on the plus side of this score right now, Luke. You know, I gave a positive statistic earlier about Rutgers in the second quarter. They've scored 28 points, but they've also given up 31 in the second quarter, and that's something the Knights hope to turn around here. Courtney Hawkins, a very dangerous kick man, was deep, but the onside kick it, and now a penalty marker out. That was a fat, well, you know why? That was a fair catch called by the up man for Michigan State, which is legal. Not only did he catch the ball, but he'll have 15 yards tacked on to that because Rutgers tackled the player. He is allowed to be unmolested if he calls for a fair catch. Steve Woslick was the man who made the fair catch in... Uh, that move might have backfired on the Knights, although time will tell. Well, the referees, those zebras, are still discussing it, but he did call for a fair catch, with which with he is within his rights to do. Once he does that, you must give him a two-yard cushion for him to catch the football. And that's what it is. And they'll mark up 15 yards. This is costly. Michigan State's going to start this drive at the Rutgers 37-yard line. That hurts. It hurts a lot. When you're playing against a team as creditable offensively as Michigan State, you don't want to start in the hole. You want to have every advantage you could possibly lay your hands on. High formation behind quarterback Dan Enos. He might have picked up a yard or so, but not much more. Sean Williams makes an excellent play, the left outside linebacker. Yeah, he knifed in. They didn't get any push on the nose tackle. Marty Mays, who's back in the ball game, went out shaken up in the first quarter, is back in. You cannot run up the middle if you don't get movement on the nose tackle. When Mays would not yield, Williams knifed in from his outside linebacking position to make the hit. That's good team defense. Second down, and call it 10, no gain on the play. At the 36, one set back behind Enos. He's straight back to throw. Has protection. Now flushed out of the pocket momentarily. Throws and has a receiver. He's got James Bradley, the senior out of Oroville, Ohio, who makes the catch. That would be his 11th reception of the season. That looks to be enough for a Michigan State first down. Well, you can't fault the Rutgers secondary that time. They were a long time in coverage. Great job by the Michigan State offensive line to protect the fan. He looked left. He looked right. He looked down the middle. He looked right again. Then he saw Bradley coming free and got the ball to Rutgers has got him out to better pass rush than that. He knows last week 17 of 25, 196 yards. 
Even against Notre Dame, you got to remember who the competition was. Here's the give up the middle, nothing doing. The Knights stop it beautifully as they stuff it up. Highland Hickson is creamed by Chris Jones, number 94, and Scott Miller. So both defensive ends crunching in that time. Yeah, they just pinched that time and they broke the play down in the middle. Two big guys, Chris Jones at 260, Scott Miller at about 275. Two big guys just pinched in. There was no running room up the middle that time for Michigan State. I look for Michigan State now to go with a little bit more play action as they try to establish the running game. Rutgers has shut it off. Let's look for play action pass a little bit further down the line. Second down. Here comes a reverse. Hawkins drops the ball. It's picked up by Rutgers and Scott Miller has it. They'll bring it back. You cannot advance a fumble in college football, but Rutgers has the ball. Well, you got it. But what a great play, not only because they recovered, but because that reverse was wide open. Courtney Aker, uh, excuse me, Courtney Hawkins would have taken that reverse. Watch this. And there was nobody there. He could still be running back to Michigan State if he didn't drop the football. Big break for the Scarlet Knights. Let's see what they can do with it. And the Knights have it. First down and 10 at the 31-yard line. And as we mentioned, you can't advance a, a behind, fumble behind the line of scrimmage. Right. If, it's before, it's, if it's forward of the line of scrimmage, like Dixon almost did in the first quarter, you can advance it. All kinds of whistles as T.K. Dorsey was running with the football. This one will probably come back, be marked off against the Knights. Yeah, you're going to have motion. He doesn't lose movement in the offensive line. And it is illegal procedure. Rutgers hit with a lot of those penalties, Lou, but that's because they give you so many different offensive looks. They put a lot of men in motion. They go from a lot of different formations, so you're going to see that against Rutgers. The Knights are really hurting themselves with penalties. Four on the evening for 35 yards. Michigan State has been penalized just once, and Rutgers starts out in the hole again. First down and 15. That's a 25. 3-3 three, three game, Rutgers and Michigan State. Here's the give up the middle, not much, maybe two yards on the carry. Cliff Confer is there to meet T.K. Dorsey. Dorsey, the sophomore out of Somerset, New Jersey. Let's watch it here. Confer, number 62, comes from the right side of your screen right there, along with number 97, Bobby Wilson. The end and the tackle both pinched in to make the big hit. One of the Rutgers offensive linemen down at the line of scrimmage. It's tough to see who that is. 64, Tim Christ, you don't want to lose him. 6'4", 275-pound senior out of Morrisville, PA. And he has been a fine player so far this season at the right guard position. Yeah, he's a big guy. It looks like the way they're feeling around there, it might be just an ankle. He may have gotten kicked. Doesn't seem to be in real intense pain. Maybe just a kick or possibly even a cramp. Rather warm for this late in the year, Lou. You know, it's... It's late September, almost into October, and it's still, I'm sure, in the in the upper 60s at game time. It's so very humid, at, too. Look at one of the uh, assistant coaches on the Michigan State sidelines. George Perlis, of course, is the head coach at Michigan State. In his eighth season, he's won 46 games, lost just 34. He's had six straight winning seasons and has taken the Spartans to five bowl games. Of course, last year, they won the Aloha Bowl, blowing out Hawaii, which really was a home game for Hawaii. Really? What a program at Michigan State. You know, we got their press guide, Lou, and they sent it in, and, and you thumb through it. it. It's like the who's who uh, in the all-time history of college football, and yes, professional football. When you look at recent years, how many players they have sent into the pro ranks as number one picks on the Giants alone right here in the metropolitan area. you got Carl Banks and, uh, and uh, Ingram. Yeah. As number one picks were former Michigan State Spartans. Here's an interesting story. You know, Rutgers assistant coach Moe's Rising, who handles the wide receivers, was a teammate of Carl Banks in high school, but he's also the cousin of Andre Rising, of course, who played at Michigan State the fine receiver, right? And a former number one draft pick right. also. We can go ahead, Tony Mandridge. It goes on and on. Lorenzo White. Now, all within the last, all within the last 10 years, an incredible college football program. All right, Rutgers faced with a second down and 13. The ball is marked at the 27-yard line. One setback and Harvard to throw. He's got plenty of protection. Fires over the middle, incomplete. Intended for the tight end, John Murphy. 
and Rutgers will be faced with a third down. By the way, Tim Christ did walk off the field under his own power. Okay, let's watch it on the replay. That time, just no one to throw it to, as Murphy was well covered by Dixon Edwards. But one positive aside on that, Lou, is that the Rutgers offensive line is doing a great job of picking up the stunts of the Michigan State defense, which is the key to their defense. Rutgers offensive line doing a great job with that. Third down and 12. One set back again behind Tarver. And the split receivers to the right side. Here's Antoine Moore, who carries the ball up the middle. And he certainly is nowhere near first down yardage, so the Knights will have to kick it away. Chuck Bulo makes the tackle for Michigan State. Well, Rutgers just playing very conservatively on that third down situation. Right now, they're playing well. Michigan State's defense laying in wait to ambush them with a possible turnover. Rutgers just wasn't going to yield to them, played it conservatively. David Dunn into kick for the Knights. It's a high end over end kick. And dragged down at the 42 yard line for the Spartans. Brian Winters, number 82. Is Good field position, though, for Michigan State. Brian Winters is number 82, not on our depth chart, so we apologize for the delay. Dan Enos comes out, and the Spartans are ready to go. First down and 10 at the 42. We are tied at three. 6.28 remaining, second quarter. Enos throws, has a receiver. First down, Spartans in Rutgers territory at the 44-yard line. Courtney Hawkins makes the catch. Roll action by Dan Enos. He has that kind of mobility here. He fakes in one direction to the tailback, duck it, rolls out, and then Courtney Hawkins does what all good receivers should do, come back to the football in a play like that. When you come back to the football, it's virtually impossible to intercept. Enos is six of seven for 65 yards. And the Spartans are on the move in Rutgers territory. Here's the gift to Tico Duckett. Turns the corner, he's got Green Acres. He's at the 20 to the 15, inside the 10. Jay Bellamy saved the touchdown, but a big play for Michigan State. See, remember what I told you, Lou, what you do think, when you, when you do things early, watch it on the replay, it sets other things up. Rutgers playing just a little bit soft, anticipating a rollout pass. This time, Enos gives it to Duckins, and Duckins takes off. Now, if he puts the football in the other hand and then stiffs on Bellamy, he walks into the end zone. But still, I mean, how can you fault the guy with a 30-plus uh, yard run? First down and goal at the one. Michigan State looking to take the lead. And Tico Duckett is brought down inside the one-yard line. And I play it tough on D. And the Spartans will have to try to take another crack. You know, Michigan State's offensive line just so big, so physical. You wonder how long Rutgers can play heads up with them. And it's really, really tough. That time, a great play by Sean Williams to meet the back in the hole. But Michigan State is so big, you wonder how long that can continue. Second down and goal at the one. No signal, no. Nothing yet. Third down as he's nailed before he gets in. Can't get any closer than that. Gonna bring out the microscope. where we just give credit to the offensive line, how big and physical they are, and now they're getting virtually no push against the Scarlet defense. Rutgers really playing with a, a lot of heart and emotion in this ball game. Third down and goal at the one. 
Highland hits it and fails behind the line of scrimmage. A brilliant defensive play. Watch number 41, knife in there. The guard was supposed to pull and take Jamil Jackson, but Jackson anticipated the snap beautifully, put in there and took out Highland Hickson. It's exactly what you need to do on the goal line, force the action. But I think there's gonna be a personal foul penalty. It looks like Rutgers celebrated just a little bit too much too soon. Looks like it's against Rutgers. Oh, we'll have would, to wait and see. Oh, Lou, that would be so costly after a brilliant play by Jamil Jackson. But if it's just for celebration, how can you make that call? No, there was there was a lot going on under the pile. I saw players go dead ball foul oh, that against hurts. Rutgers. Oh, that hurts. Oh. I don't think it was for celebration. There was a lot of extracurricular activities, if you will, Lou, going on in the midst of that pile, and that will happen. Now the ball is at the one and a half yard line. And it should be an automatic first down I for Michigan that State. Is. That's the biggest thing. It will give Rutgers another, uh, excuse me, it will give Michigan State another four tries at the goal line. Yep. First down, Michigan State. A unpopular call here in the middle line. I, for, for Rutgers' sake, I, I would hope that it would be, Lou. This is their home stadium, and they certainly want their fans to support them. So, therefore, a very unpopular call. Doug Graber cannot be happy about that. I know what he's saying to them. He's saying it's a goal line situation. You want your guys to play with intensity. How can you stop them from playing that way? Here's another penalty marker, and this one is going to be against Coach Graber. You gotta play within yourself. You have to have that controlled fire, Lou. You gotta play with enormous amount of intensity from whistle to whistle, but once that whistle sounds, you get up and you keep your mouth shut. Unsportsmanlike. Yeah, unsportsmanlike conduct of this record. And that's on Coach Graber. Thing we don't have a microphone down there because I think we'd be deleting a lot of expletives. Not that Doug Graber is not a gentleman, but these are not gentleman-like times. Not when your back is against uh, the shadows of your own goalpost. Rutgers, six penalties for 37 yards. And they have hurt right here. Michigan State has a first and goal at the one. Here's the pitch, the bucket. Touchdown, Michigan State. You get the guard and the tackle pull. They just blow out the Rutgers defenders. Duckett leaps into the end zone. In that particular situation, an easy six. But I tell you, if you would have seen what led up to that, you knew that would really that wasn't really the case. John Langlow is in to kick the extra point as the Spartans have taken the lead. 9-3. He'll try to make it 10. Kick is up. Kick is good. Michigan State 10. Rutgers three as the Rutgers fans let the officials know their feelings. Four minutes even remaining here in this second quarter. Lou, Rutgers has got to put that behind them now, and that's a good sign. You hear the fans cheering. They're telling their team exactly that, hey, we know you held them for three downs and they would have been forced for the field goal or for the long touchdown try. We know we gave it your best. Give us some more. We'll root you through the rest of this thing. Michigan State looking for their first win of the season. Just got a report on number 64, Tim Christ has an injured shin and will return, Lou. The drive for Michigan State, six plays, five via the run, one via the pass, 58 yards, two minutes, 31 seconds, Duckett, one yard run. The big play was Duckett with a 42 yard run. He has 11 carries for 81 yards. That was the big offensive play, but 
you really can't call it a play. The big thing that helped Michigan State, of course, were the penalties. So tough to make a call like that on the goal line, though, Lou, because it becomes so physical there. You're, you're cr scratching and clawing for every single inch. So it's very difficult to separate what's clean and tough and what is illegal. Langlow with a squib kick. Tim Pernetti can't get the handle. Antoine Moore does and runs it right up the gut to the 35-yard line. Nice job by Antoine Moore that time. Good presence of mind to field the ball first, then take it right up the middle. Brian Bulatich made the tackle for Michigan State. And the Knights now with a first down and 10 at the 35-yard line, and they trail for the first time here today. Rutgers now has to play within themselves offensively, Lou. I said they trail for the first time. It's actually the second time. They were down 3-0 and then tied it up 3-3. They're down by 7, 10-3 the score. Lone set back behind Tarver. And he fakes it to Dorsey. Has Jenkins coming out of the backfield. He's got the 40, 45, and looks to have enough for the Rutgers first down and really took a shot on the knee. Freddie Wilson came up and gave him a shot on the knee. Jenkins limps away. Yeah, but Jenkins is a real tough guy. He's played linebacker. He's played tight end. Having a great senior year at tight end. But what made that play go also was the beautiful fake by Tom Tarver. Faked to TK Dorsey into the line, hit the ball on the hip, then slipped the tight end into the flat. That's a nice looking play and a play that Rutgers must execute to be successful tonight. There's a guy they don't want to lose. James Jenkins has two catches for 39 yards and has been an outstanding player for the Scarlet Knights this year. 11 receptions coming into the game for 121 yards. He's a senior out of Staten Island. It's also an excellent blocker, Lou. There you take a look at uh, Doug, Doug Graber. Graber, and that's Mose Risen right next to him, I, I believe. There's George Perlis. I'll tell you, he's, his team's in a dogfight right now. You know, when, when you come in with that kind of reputation, you've got to be prepared to have teams gunning for you, and that's exactly what Rutgers is doing here tonight. They're gunning for the Spartans. Michigan State looking for their 500th win in their long history. They have 499 coming in. You know, a, a fact that our viewers may not know is that Rutgers has already cracked the 500 win barrier. Rutgers also very, very rich in football tradition. Jenkins is up on his feet and he's walking off under his own power. And that, of course, is terrific news for the Scarlet Knights. He's one a tough guy, Lou, he'll be back. One area that Rutgers is deep is tight end. However, you don't want to lose a James Jenkins. Not at all. No, he's one of your premier offensive players. You can never afford to lose a guy with those kind of abilities. Meanwhile, the Knights have a first down and 10 at the 47-yard line. Three and a half remaining. Melton is in motion. Here's the pitch, though, the other way to Bailey. Cuts it in, now cuts against the green. And Bailey's still on his feet, all the way down to the Michigan State 40-yard line. A terrific run. Great feet, great vision, Lou. Real quick feet. Remember, Bailey, very low center of gravity, only about 5'6", about 185 pounds, so he's hard to knock off his feet. Now watch, the play is looking pretty good right here. Makes the nice cut, breaks the tackle by Jenkins. Now here's where he really makes it happen. Right here, another great move on the strong safety, then gets into the secondary for good yardage. First down and 10, Rutgers at the Michigan State 40-yard line. Under three minutes remaining in the quarter. Here's the fake to Bailey. Tarver has a receiver, and Warren Cotto can't make the catch and really got cream at the 25-yard line. He is getting up slowly. Well, you notice that Warren Cotto didn't really reach for that pass. And Lou, I, I honestly can't say as I blame him. When you leave yourself that unprotected over the middle, you're bound to pay a price, and Guarantano did. The only thing that I can say is that Charlie Sanders, the great tight end for the for the uh, old Detroit Lions, once said, guys, you're going to take it anyway. You might as well come out of it with something, and that's the reception. So you've got to be able to concentrate, knowing you're going to get whacked one way or the other, and hang on to the football. It's Carlos Marino, backup tight end for Michigan State there, you see, on the sidelines. Meanwhile, Guarantano's okay, and he goes off the field. Let's go, let's go. 
he was wide open too. Look for Rutgers to come back to that play. In that particular case, Tarver has an option to either throw to Jenkins in the flat, the tight end, or the flanker coming across the middle, in that case, Guarantano. That play has been wide open every time. Rutgers will go back to it. And the Knights with a second down and 10 at the 40-yard line. Clock stopped at 2.52. 10 to three, Michigan State. Here's Tarver, he's got his man. That's the tight end, Stoll. Chris Stoll, a sophomore tight end with a big catch, and it's a Rutgers first down at the 25-yard line. Stoll, a big guy, really put a punishing hit on strong cornerback Todd Murray, who's down on the turf. Straight drop, drop back pass. Tarver catches them in the blitz, in the blitz, excuse me, once again finds Stoll in the seam of the zone. You see Bullock number 41, and he's the middle linebacker. Whenever there's a blitz, he's got a lot of area to cover. Difficult assignment for a middle linebacker to try to cover a rangy young tight end like Stoll. Yeah, so looking at Michigan State coaching staff, they have to be concerned the way Rutgers has been able to move the ball consistently tonight against what is supposed to be, a, not supposed to be, what is an excellent defense. Well, one of the best defenses in the country, and if I were to be surprised at anything, is the fact that Rutgers has been so successful on offense. And I don't want to sound like I'm a genius, but we did talk before the game, Lou, and said what was Rutgers going to have to do to be successful. One was to protect Tarver, they have done that, and two was to find seams in the zone, not try to take it all by going up over the top. Michigan State won't give you that. Find the seams in the zone, protect Tarver so he can get the ball to his receivers. They have done that, and they have run just well enough to be able to set those type of things up. And so far tonight, the tight end has been a featured part of the Rutgers offense. Right now, Todd Murray, who's a sophomore out of Bloomington, Minnesota, is still down at the 25-yard line. Michigan State coaching staff very, very high on Todd Murray. Also, they think that he has uh, star potential, so we hope uh, he's not too seriously injured. It doesn't appear to be. Looks a little woozy, though. It's like, what planet is this? He looks to be all right, and Murray had a big play last week against the Fighting Irish, blocked the punt against Notre Dame. They'll take him off the field. And, uh, again, he took a tough hit from tight end Chris Stoll. Meanwhile, Rutgers is moving smartly down the Giant Stadium field. Eddie Brown has come in to replace Todd Murray. First down and 10, Rutgers at the 25-yard line. Tarver, 9 of 18, 120 yards. Play action, Tarver has all day fired at the 13-yard line, Jim Guarantano, and now there's another penalty marker. Are you going to get another you're going to get another personal foul this time against Michigan State? Number eight, the man who just came in ground, laying a forearm on the back of the head of one of the Rutgers wide receivers. Look at all the time that Tom Tarver has to throw. That time, Guarantano sits in the seam of the zone, cradles the football, and makes the catch. You know, you never mentioned the offensive line. I think this is a good time to do it. They are doing an outstanding job tonight. Absolutely. The key in this ball game right now is the fact that Tom Tarver's offensive line is affording him time to throw the football. And the penalty is a personal foul against Michigan State. And the Spartans are backed up in the shadow of their own goal line. Rutgers with a first and goal at the six. Remember, with Murray out of the ball game, let's see if Rutgers looks to exploit his replacement in the second game. Harvard to pitch to Bailey. He's got room. Touchdown, Rutgers. Sheer guts and desire by William Bailey. Foot blocking at the point of attack, and then Bill Bailey said, I want six, and that's what you want on the goal line. You want a guy who's hungry. Remember, Rutgers had only scored one rushing TV, TD up to that point, and that was William Bailey's. He tacks up number two. And Benestad is in to try to tie it up. Kick is up, kick is good. 
two minutes and six seconds left in the second quarter, and Rutgers has tied Michigan State. It's 10-10. A heck of a first half. Oh, what a dog fight right now. Rutgers is just fighting, kicking, scratching, and clawing for everything, both offensively and defensively. Blue, you said to credit the offensive line. Well, what about the coaching staff? What a great game plan Rutgers has come in with here tonight. Not only from a strategic standpoint, but from an emotional standpoint as well. They have come into Giant Stadium ready to play football. The drive, six plays. Here's the touchdown again. Now watch Bailey. He just wants it as he just launches himself, takes a great hit by Edwards, and still launches himself into the end zone. The drive, six plays, 65 yards. One minute, 54 seconds, capped off by the Bailey six-yard run. And on the drive, Tarver outstanding, three for four, 41 yards. He has just looked terrific. Man, has he matured as a quarterback. He doesn't panic when he gets a rush. He runs when he needs to, but he can also now pick out secondary and tertiary receivers. Man, is he maturing week by week. I think they've got a winner in Tom Tarver. Benestat to kick off, and Courtney Hawkins stands at his own goal line. Well, you don't want to kick it to Courtney Hawkins, an excellent, excellent return man, one of the best in the nation. Great open field runner, Lou. And Benestat kicks it off. It's a high kick. Hawkins is at the five. He's to the 10. And breaks through. Hawkins. Still on his feet across the 40-yard line. And as you mentioned, Frank, he's a tough guy. Oh, I talked to many people about Courtney Hawkins, and they said he's a lot like Jerry Rice. It's When he catches long touchdown passes, you read the next day in the paper that's an 80-yard TD pass. Well, it was probably about a 15 or 20-yard throw, and then Courtney Hawkins ran it the rest of the 60. Watch the speed. The 4-3 sprinter, sprinter makes a cut right there, strong enough to break a tackle. And when he gets in the open field, folks, it's pretty scary. First down 10, Michigan State. Spartans at their own 45-yard line. And they go to the left side, trying to turn that corner. Tico Duckett, and he's banged down across midfield. Picks up about six or seven on the carry. Jamil Jackson makes the tackle. Well, Rutgers cannot afford to play too soft on the defense right now. They're laying back, figuring that Michigan State will have to go to the air. But when you have the backs, the quality of a Tico Duckett, he can get you that ground in a whole lot of hurry. So you've got to play run defense here as well. Second down and eight. This time they'll run right. Duckett now cuts it back inside. He's got enough for a first down. Chris Jones, the sophomore out of Sutton in Maryland, makes the tackle. But that should move the sticks for the Spartans. Well, that'll be an automatic timeout as they move the sticks. But keep in mind, Lou, that Michigan State still has three timeouts remaining. With 120 left on the clock, that's plenty of time to do a lot of damage. Rutgers cannot stop playing defense now. A minute 20 remaining, and the clock winding down in the second quarter. 10-10 the score. Again, they'll run it. No, he knows. Play action. Throws. It is incomplete. Intended for Bradley, and quite a hit put on by Ron Allen to knock the ball free. Oh, nice defense by Ron Allen. He comes in with a very sore shoulder, and as a matter of fact, they said he was questionable whether he could go full speed tonight or even play at all. He has played an excellent game defensively. That time, Bradley was open. Enos got him the football. Only the good defensive play by Ron Allen prevented that from being a completion. That's a good effort by number one, Ron Allen. Second down and 10 at the 45. 101 remaining in the second. He knows straight back to throw this time. Sets up a screen, and he's got his receiver. That's Duckett, who runs the ball, and a penalty marker on the play. Duckett is across the 30, but I think this one might be coming back. You might get pass interference that time, Lou, because it looked like one of the men downfield got their hands on a Rutgers defender before the ball reached Duckett. Let's see what the call is. It's holding, holding. It, yes, against Michigan State. That wipes out a fine screen play. I saw, I saw the white shirt on the red jersey. I thought it might have been there just a bit early when the flag went down, but the officials are saying that it was holding. Big break for Rutgers and an excellent call for Michigan State. Rutgers right now trying to stay aggressive, 
Michigan State trying to use that aggression against the Scarlet. Second down. And we'll call it about 17 to go for Michigan State. The clock is stopped, 54 seconds remaining in the first half. Spartans send receivers split out right side. Here's Enos, play action again, looking to throw. Now he's flushed out of the pocket, and he'll run it. And he runs out of bounds at the 47-yard line. Stops the clock with 47 seconds left. Great job of containment by Elnardo Webster. Remember, Enos is an excellent runner. That's an open field play by a big linebacker, 235-pound linebacker, matched one-on-one -on -one in the open field with a real shifty 195-pounder. Uh, Webster squared his body, squared up, rode Enos right out of bounds. That's good defense by Leonardo Webster. That's why he's one of Rutgers' best defensive players. Third down and 11. And the Rutgers crowd is into it. Enos to throw. In trouble. Now fires. It is incomplete. Intended for Rob Roy, the big fullback. And the Spartans will have to punt. Well, Michigan State Rob likes Roy. to throw their fullback. Rob Roy doesn't get to carry the ball behind the line of scrimmage all that often. But they do like to use him in their pass pattern. The only thing that I question, Lou, even if they had completed that, why throw a six-yard pass when it's third and 12? I don't get it. Well, Josh Butlin is in to punt the football away. Good snap and a good kick. Bounds inside the 10 and out of bounds at the eight yard line. So with 35 seconds left, you wouldn't think Rutgers would do too many fancy things here. Although with Doug Graver, you never know. Well, I don't think in a situation like this, even Marshall Roberts that time in fielding the punt saw what time, what, what type of time was left on the clock. There's just no way he's gonna take any real big chances. The record, Rutgers offense is most certainly not gonna do it here. There's just no way. 10-10 our score. Rutgers will line it up with just 35 seconds as we mentioned left in his first half. Harbor, one back behind him. Receiver split out left and right. And they give it on the draw play to Antoine Moore. He fights hard and has a couple of yards across the 10 yard line. Cliff Comfer makes the tackle and the clock is winding down here. Watch this, he runs right through the tackle of number 51, Carlos Jenkins, an excellent tackler as he makes the quick cut and then blows right through that arm tackle. That's a good sign. Even though Rutgers is not gonna do anything fancy, they're not gonna quit. And they're not going to run another play here either in this first half. The first half has come to an end at Giant Stadium. A terrific ball game. Your score at halftime, Michigan State 10, Rutgers 10, back and 10 against Rutgers. Some individual statistics in that first half. For Michigan State, Dan Eno, 6 of 9, 65 yards, solid. Tico Duckett, 13 carries for 92 yards, one touchdown. He has accounted for all but six of Michigan State's rushing yards. Hawkins had three catches, 38 yards. Rutgers stats. Tarver, 10 for 19, 133 yards, but two interceptions. Bailey, nine rushes for 31 yards. He had the one touchdown. Antoine Moore had a good first half, six rushes for 36 yards. Jenkins, two catches, 39 yards. Florentano, three catches for 36 yards. And five different Rutgers receivers have caught passes in that first half. And Lou, one thing that you can't mention statistically, but is equally important, if not more so, with the fact that the Rutgers offensive line is giving Tom Tarver time to throw the football. They have done a magnificent job so far in the first half. All right, pull up your easy chair. Fasten your seatbelt. Here we go. Okay. Second half ready to get underway. If it's anything like the first half, we're in store for some great college football. John Fenestat kicks it off. Rutgers kicks left to right on your screen. It's Courtney Hawkins at the 15 to the 20 to the 25 and brought down across the 30-yard line at the 33. That's where Michigan State will put it in play. Bernard Eady on the tackle for the Scarlet Knights. All right, Michigan State will come up with a big offensive line. Jeff Pearson, 6'3", 265, the center. Eric Moten, 6'3", 292, left guard. Matt Keller, 6'4", 295, right guard. 
Jim Johnson, 6'5", 295, right tackle. At Toby Heaton, 6'6", 291, left tackle. What do you feed these kids, Luke? Dan Enos is the quarterback. Rob Roy, the full, excuse me, the fullback. Tico Duckett, the tailback. Hawkins, the flanker. Bradley, the scrimmage, right up the middle. Tico Duckett. And he has the Michigan State first down across the 43 yard line. Leonardo Webster on the tackle for this Father Nice and Malik Jackson. Rutgers defense, Scott Miller, Chris Jones, and we'll give you the rest after the replay. Nice cut here by Tico Duckett there to find a huge hole as the mammoth offensive line of Michigan State walled off the Rutgers defenders. Folks, that's an easy hole to run through. Miller and Jones at defensive ends. Marty Mays is the nose guard. Williams and Webster, two active outside linebackers. And running up the middle, Marty Mays makes the tackle on Tico Duckett. Pick up of about four on the play and a second down play coming up for Michigan State. Watch it here on the replay. Super quick, Tico Duckett. Little bit of hole there, right there. You got Jackson and uh, Marty Mays making the tackle, but that's good yardage on the first down, especially for the offense that Michigan State has. They like to be second and six. High formation for the Spartans. They'll run it left side. Now turn it in and duck it. Nice cut. And he's close to getting another Spartan first down. Elnardo Webster makes the tackle, but this is a good offensive drive for Michigan State, taking it right at Rutgers. Well, you see running backs now getting smaller and smaller. Remember, they always talked about big backs, and it's nice to have a big back. But you see the return of the small back because watch Duckett hide behind his huge offensive lineman right there. Some great blocking. See when he ducked, he just disappeared behind those big white shirts. The defenders couldn't even see him. Then he uses his quickness to cut the ball up the field and get good yardage. Highland Hickson is the tailback now for the Spartans. And they have a man in the slot as well. Here's the pitch to Hickson. Looks to turn the corner, turns it back in. A nice effective run across the 40 and down to the 37. And right now, the Spartans are really taking it to the Rutgers defense. Well, terrific block by the fullback, Rob Roy. He's a guy that you don't talk too much about because he doesn't carry the football. But C27 there just buried number 99. That's, uh, excuse me, check that, 92, Sean Williams, who was the player who needed to be blocked at the point of attack. Of attack. Rob Roy got the job done. That's why the play was successful. Second down, two. At the 38, here's the pitch. They come left side. Dixon this time turned inside, but he gets the first down on a nice individual effort. Elnardo Webster comes over along with Jamil Jackson, and Jamil took the brunt of that. He's still down on the turf, the sophomore from Elizabeth. Well, Hickson's a big guy at 220 pounds and tailback, and he can, uh, he can deliver a blow as well as take it. But once again, Rob Roy with the good block on Elnardo Webster, the outside linebacker. Elnardo let Roy get to his feet so that even though Roy didn't knock him down, he made the play successfully because Webster couldn't make the play. Watch it right at the top of your screen there. 93 has to spin off that block. By that time, it's too late. Good job by Webster to get back in on the play, but now you're talking about four or five yards down the field, first down Michigan State. And Jamil Jackson is sitting up. That's a good sign. Chuck Bulo, middle linebacker. He looks like a middle linebacker. You better believe he? it. How'd you like to meet that guy in the down gallery? I'll tell you. Not without a baseball bat, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> and they're still attending to Jamil Jackson. 10-10 the score. 12.55 remaining in this third quarter. I tell you, if Jamil Jackson can stay healthy, stay with his books, do a good job overall in the classroom and on the field, he's got starter written all over him. He is a tough, hard-nosed, excellent athlete. He's a real, real gem for uh, for uh, I'll tell you, him and his brother, the Jackson boys. Boy, oh boy, they're going to be quite a, quite a combination. For many years. And he's fine as he trots off the field. First down and ten. Spartans at the Rutgers 34-yard line. And as you have a nice drive here to the game quarter number three. That's a huge hole. Big gainer inside the 15-yard line. Rutgers has got to do something up front right now. They may want to shoot a linebacker in there and break up the rhythm of Michigan State because watch the offensive line.
straight ahead blocking, and it looks like the Rutgers defensive men are on sleds right now or roller skates because they're moving backwards so quickly. Michigan State establishing some dominance right now in the offensive line. Rutgers wants to, must shake it up a little bit on defense. Duncan has 134 yards rushing already. And we just started the third quarter. Here's Duncan again. Cuts it back in again. He's inside the 10 to about the seven yard line. Miss Martin's just taking it to him. Well, it's an interesting play that Michigan State is running right now. Their offensive linemen are so big. What they're doing is they're hitting and just maintaining contact, and then Duckett, using great vision, cuts where he sees the hole as he goes down the line of scrimmage. There's, there's two things that make that work. One, that the offensive linemen don't lose contact with the defense, and two, that your back has great vision. Michigan State has both of those factors to make that play go. Drive so far, seven plays all on the ground, 62 yards. And the Rutgers fans trying to get the defense fired up. Second down, five, seven yard line. Here's the pitch, cutting it back in his ducket. He is brought down at the one yard line on a tough fit by Jay Bellamy, but that's probably enough for a Michigan State first down. I tell you, Jay Bellamy could really come up and stick you. We've seen him do it on the special teams. Watch this hit. But again, watch the blocking. Now, Duckett has lots of options where he wants to run. Now, Bellamy really drives him into the ground, but it's a little bit too little, too late. There are just too many options for the Michigan State backs right now. First and goal for the Spartans at the RU one-yard line. Big pullback is over the top. There might have been a fumble on the play. No call as of yet from the Zebras. They're not signaling touchdown. touchdown. Michigan State is there. It goes. Michigan State, Rob Roy. But see, look at the push that time. The push is absolutely enormous, so that even though it looks low, like everything is being jammed up in the middle, what's happening is, yes, it's being jammed up, but two yards beyond the line of scrimmage. And that's why you have six for Michigan State. Very impressive drive to open the second half. And the Spartans sending a message to the Scarlet Knights there on that drive. John Langlow is in to kick the extra point. Michigan State is on top 16-10. is up, 50 is good. Breaking the action, 10 minutes, 58 seconds remaining, third quarter. Michigan State 17, Rutgers 10. So, what do we have here? I call it bank tellers. Oh, well, you have to take it further. They're too friendly. What do you mean? Well, haven't you ever dealt with a teller? This window is closed. <laughs> there is no record of your deposit. <laughs> hey, I'm on break now. You understand? The tellers at my bank aren't anything like that. Who and where do you bank? In the enchanted forest? <laughs> no. MapQuest, raising the standards of banking. Ah! Lucy, are you okay? I think I got whiplash. And a concussion. Every now and then, life hits you with some very sour notes. And doctor bills can really add up. At MetLife, we do all we can to pay your pain promptly. Get Met. It pays. Michigan State looks to kick off. John Langlow will do the honors. His Spartans lead it by seven. Again, it's a wobbly kick. It is fumbled, but picked up by T.K. Dorsey at the 25. Michigan State does not want Rutgers to run the ball back. They obviously have uh, done their scouting on Ron Allen. Well, if you've seen Ron Allen go, you know why Michigan State does not want to kick the ball to Ron Allen. He is a speedster with the ability to go all the way at any time. All right, Rutgers comes out on offense. Broadbent the center, Owens and Chris the guards, Forbes and Mitchell the tackles. Jenkins the tight end, Guarantano, Sergeant split end, Melton the flanker, Bailey and Dorsey behind Tom Tarver, who had an excellent first half despite the two interceptions. First down, 10 at the 25. Here's the give. Bailey runs it, gets away. Bailey's still on his knees. Pummeled to the ground by Carlos 
extended. But it's a good carry on first down. I'll tell you, Bailey's a tough kid. He got whipped to the ground by Carlos Jenkins. Bailey just popped right up and said, hey, no big deal, Carlos. I can't do that. Boy, Bailey is a tough customer to get a hold of. He just wiggles right through there. Well, we had talked to the Rutgers, Rutgers coaching staff about Bill Bailey, and they just said he is a terrific person. He's a great kid, and he's going to be an excellent runner for us. Uh, yeah, he hasn't proven wrong so far. Second down, and six. Melton in motion. T.K. Dorsey this time turns it inside and slammed down at the 31-yard line. He might have picked up two. Cliff Confer, the big defensive end. Makes the stop, and now it's a third down and five. Well, Confer is a big guy at 6'3", 265 pounds, two-time undefeated high school heavyweight wrestling champ. Does that mean, folks? It means he's pretty damn strong. Watch number 62. They just don't get any movement on him at all. Right there, see his left shoulder? He takes on the blocker with his right and takes down the running back with his left. That's power, folks. Third down, five. One step back behind Carver. Receiver split left and right. Carter back to throw. He now fires, has a receiver. Again, in the crease is Jenkins. And he's got the first down across the 45 yard line. An excellent read once again by Tom Tarver. They caught Michigan State in the blitz. Number 57, Dixon Edwards coming on the blitz. You'll see him out of the right side of your screen. Tarver hangs in there, finds the tight end. James Jenkins wide open over the middle. Down at 10 for the Knights. Jenkins comes out momentarily. Chris Stoll will replace him. Ball marked at the 46. Left is on the move. Nine minutes remaining in the third. Take to Dorsey. Play action. Carver. Now he's in trouble. He throws the ball out of bounds. No flag because Chris Stoll, the tight end, was in the area. Yeah, and you had Bobby Wilson draped all over Tom Tarver like a cheap suit. The officials couldn't say he was grounded because he did try to throw the football, but it's tough when you've got about 275 pounds draped all over you. A good play again by Tom Tarver. However, before that bad play, he had a man open, waited too long. He's got to hit that timing pattern. He's got to get that ball out. He had Gary Melton wide open in the flat that time, just didn't get him the football. Second down and 10. Clock stopped at 9.01, third quarter. Michigan State leads at 17-10. Take the blitz. Now they'll move back. Tarver on the delay. Antoine Moore looks for a hole and pushes his way across the midfield to the Michigan State 49. I'll tell you, I've been watching the Rutgers offensive line pretty closely. Now watch this. We've got a, a lot of stalemates and better up there. Whenever you get that, you've got a good, if you've got a good running back, you've got a good chance of getting positive yardage because the running back will use that stalemate to his advantage to make a hard cut either left or right, put his head down and get a cut, tough couple of yards. That time Antoine Moore did exactly that, therefore positive yardage. Third down and five. Rutgers at the Michigan State 48-yard line. Harbor to throw. Fires has a receiver. Jenkins has a first down at the 42-yard line. And you can see him with both hands around the ball. That's just a possession reception. All right, so they're just finding the seam in the zone. Michigan State playing a little bit soft in the, in the zone. The Rutgers receivers finding the seam in that zone, catching the football, wrapping it up, getting the first down. Let's back it up just a little bit, though. It all starts with the protection up front. The Rutgers did a great job in the first half, and they're continuing that here in the second. Jenkins, four catches, 60 yards. And the Knights have themselves a nice little drive here as well as they try to answer Michigan State in this third quarter. Very important, very important. Under eight minutes remaining. Rutgers at the 42. Here's Tarver all alone. Fires, intercepted. Got him wide open. One of the few out and out bad plays that Tom Tarver made. Great play action pass. He had Guarantano open. Try to cut it just a little too fine. When you overthrow a ball down the middle, watch Tarver right here. Wishes he has this one back. Look at the strong safety right there, number 19, Freddie Wilson. When you overthrow a ball over the middle, those safeties, if they get deep zone coverage, are going to be right there for the interception, Lou. 
bad move that time by Tom Tarver, and I might add, one of the few he's made tonight. Three interceptions on the game well, for Tarver. Some of the other ones, a little bit questionable. That one was just, just a bad read and a, and a bad throw as he threw it too long over the middle. That's a no-no. First and 10, Michigan State at their own 21. Here is Daniels on the roll. He's firing long foot. The offense wide open. Deep in Rutgers territory. Marshall Roberts on the coverage, but what can you say when you got a guy like Courtney Hawkins who seems to have come down hard on his shoulder? He's got 4-3 sprinter speed, just a straight fly pattern. Roll out pass, Dan Enos to Courtney Hawkins. Now watch this. Good protection for Enos. Sees Hawkins is wide open. Really airs it out. You see how wide open he is there. If Hawkins could have kept his feet, that's six. Hawkins, four catches, 84 yards. You can see that he's struggling on the sideline. Uh, he's hurt, Lou. He's really down. He came down hard. He gave it his all to get to that football. And he popped on that shoulder. That's not a good sign at all. Meanwhile, Michigan State is rolling again after the Rutgers turnover. Tico ducking wide open. Bang down hard. But he picks up about five before he does. Malik Jackson, who is quite a hitter in that secondary, makes the tackle. But that's a pickup of about five. Malik Jackson really throws his 205 pounds around with authority. But once again, Lou, that's a little bit too little too late. Although Doug Graber will take a hard hit from his secondary at any time, he doesn't want it eight yards downfield. Now, this is the same kind of play, this little belly move, and then Duckett takes the option of whatever hole he finds is the most open. Spartans looking to blow it open here in the third quarter. Here is the pitch to Duckett. He's in trouble now. Moves inside of Elmardo Webster, and Webster did a fine job to turn that play back inside. Oh, nice open field tackle by Elnardo Webster. Again, you're in a situation where you've got a 235-pound linebacker in the open, find, open field trying to find and then tackle an extremely quick 185-pound tailback. Nice play. Michigan State, third down, four. It's a big play for the Rutgers defense here. They've got to be able to hold. Ball at the Rutgers 27, 17 to 10. Michigan State, six minutes remaining in the third quarter. Not a good sign there. Courtney Hawkins taking the shoulder pads off. That means it's a relatively serious injury. Enos back to throw, has protection, fires, has a receiver. First down, Spartans inside the 20 yard line. It is looked to be James Bradley on the catch. Ron Allen on the coverage. Ron's got to be a little bit more aggressive. Use his speed to get back in the play. Laying off the receiver. Enos does a good job of looking off the defense by looking to his right and then throwing back to his left. But look at the cushion that Ron Allen right now is giving James Bradley. He's got to play a little bit more aggressively. Get on that receiver. Get it in his hip pocket. First down 10, Michigan State. And the Rutgers crowd quieting down just a little bit now. They can feel the shift of momentum. Here's the give, up and over the top. Highland Hickson carried the football. He's inside the 15 to the 13 yard line. Pick up of about three on the play, second down. Let's, let's watch it on the replay. Good job of submarining in there by one of the Rutgers defenders. I didn't get the number. Then Elnardo Webster and uh, Jamil Jackson put away the running back. But right now, Michigan State playing very aggressively. Whenever you see running backs throwing themselves through the air, that means they're feeling pretty damn good about what they're doing on the ground. Second down. And he, you know, gives Duckett against the flow. And Elnardo Webster there to cover him up. Picked up maybe two or three. And well, a third down play coming up. I'm sorry, Lou, but that's exactly what Rutgers has to do, is they've got to look for that cutback run. Duckett has been very successful with that all evening. They do a little belly play. We've been talking about it through the second period and here into the third. What, what Michigan State is doing is just moving their linemen into the defense, sustaining a block, and then letting Duckett pick what hole he wants to run it. Now watch it. Now when he looks to come back, cut back, watch Elnardo Webster trailing through the backfield as he should, and then swallows up the running back. That's good defense by Elnardo Webster. Third down, five. That's the 12. High formation for the Spartans. Enos fakes the handoff. Now he'll run it himself. He's got good yardage. He's in. Play, 
Butler. That's a design rollout run by the quarterback all the way. He knows did it very, very successfully against both Syracuse and Notre Dame. He's just going to run that all the way. He's not looking to throw. Watch the move he puts on Malik Jackson right there. Malik says, oops, I think I'm missing parts of my underwear over there. I'll have to pick it up a little bit later. That's calling, uh, saying you're faking somebody out of your athletic supporter. Here's Langlow to attempt the extra point. Kick is up, which is good. On that on the field. Four minutes, 25 seconds remaining. Third quarter, Michigan State 24, Rutgers 10. It takes more than concrete and steel to keep New Jersey's economy strong. It takes resources, commitment, and teamwork. At First Fidelity, we're proud to have helped New Jersey become the home of hundreds of major corporations and two professional football teams. Our commitment to teamwork goes far beyond the gridiron. It comes through in everything we do. Let First Fidelity show you how we can team up to make great things happen for you. see Courtney Hawkins again tonight as they just took him off the field. That's a costly play, that long catch for Michigan State. Again, they go with the squid kick, tight end, Chris Stoll. And Rutgers has decent field position with which to work over the 35-yard line. Knights need a drive now. They drove brilliantly last time, Frank. But, of course, the turnover really hurt. Very, very costly turnover. Rutgers, we knew coming in, Lou, to play with Michigan State had to be virtually error-free. They have not been so tonight. The three interceptions and the penalties have really, really cost them. They played very, very well in spots, but they have to play almost perfect to beat Michigan State. And the Knights down by two touchdowns now, 24-10. Four minutes remaining in the third. Backs. Behind Tarver and they fake the handoff. Tarver will throw. This one's popped up and Dorsey makes the catch across the 40 to the 41. It's all going to come back though. I think you're going to get a hold again. Whenever you get the Zebras throwing that flag in the middle of the stack, you're going to get a holding call and I think it's going to go against number 88, Chris Stahl. time also as you can see on the replay Tarver really trying to force it now into Jenkins Jenkins was not open well this was what Doug Graber was really dreading he said if we get into a situation where we have to throw the football we are in big trouble that's what happened last week against Penn State and Tom Tarver quite frankly took a beating and too many penalties from the Knights in this one seven penalties 47 yards that Michigan State drive seven plays 79 yards Three minutes, 15 seconds. He knows the 12-yard run. And Michigan State touchdown drives this half, 68 to 79 yards. Those are long drives. First and 20. Rutgers at the 26. Dorsey tries to turn the corner. And he has about two yards. Maybe three to the 29. Lou, did you see big number 96, Bill Johnson, get out there and make that play? Now, Dorsey is a very quick 218-pound fullback. Bill Johnson is six foot four, 282 pounds. Watch him, number 96. Look at him shake it. Watch this. Watch him get in on this play right there. Not the primary tackler, but got a good chunk of it. And when you're 282 pounds, any chunk is a good chunk. That's hustle. Tarver throws, Jenkins makes the catch. And again, a very effective play as he plows ahead to the 45-yard line. And the Scarlet Knights will be about a buck short. That time, the Jenkins got together. Carlos tackled James. No relation. Now, good job by Tarver. Watch number 92, Jeff Jones, on a little stunt right up the middle. Gets right in his face. But Tarver hangs in there and unloads the ball to his tight end, Jenkins. That's what you got to do as a quarterback sometimes, folks. You know you're going to take one on the chin, but if you want to get the job done, well, there it is. Third 
down one for Rutgers. Big play right here, Lou. Argue at their own 45, trail by two touchdowns. Give to Dorsey. He's in trouble, and I don't think he got there. Well, that, that one was destined to failure from the very beginning. Tarver right now pointing that he wants to go for it, knowing they already did not make it. That one was doomed for failure. Tarver did not get the ball to Dorsey where he should have been, and then Dorsey did the cardinal sin by bellying the play wide. When you're a 220-pound when you're fullback, man, you've got to head it up the field with some authority. That was a bad play by Rutgers. Needed to get to about the 46, and they are about half a yard shy. Well, the Rutgers fans are saying go, go. and Rutgers will go. Fourth and a half a yard. Chris Stoll comes in. T.K. Dorsey comes in. Let's not forget the defense fired up right now. This is a real big play, obviously. This Really, so much of the ball game hinges on this play right now, Lou. You give Michigan State this kind of field position with the way their offense is playing, oof, does not look good for Rutgers. That makes it even more important to make this first down. Here we go. Fourth down, less than a yard. William Bailey, he's got a first down. Save the touchdown. What a great play by Bill Bailey, the tailback. That's running with authority. Get your shoulders square now, right here. Nice lead block by TK Dorsey. Bailey reads the hole. Good block on the outside by John Murphy, the tight end, who was in there. And then a good job of Bailey reading and then accelerating through the hole. Make sure he gets the first down first, then whatever you can get at him. Bailey, 57 yards, rushing on 12 carries. First down, Rutgers at the Michigan State 33. And the Knights, no quitting them as they try to come back. Down by 14. Tarver throws high, that greatly open in the flat. Excuse me, it just fired it high. See, Michigan State likes to play that soft, ball, uh, soft zone, so at the snap of the football, their defensive backs are already taking a step back. As you watch it here, Tarver puts just a little bit too much on it. Now look how far off the Michigan State defenders are. I'm not saying that Brantley would necessarily break it, but before the defenders can even get to him, it's a four or five yard gain on first down. Carver back to throw, second down, 10. Now he'll run it, pulls it down, and steps out of bounds. Picked up about three or four. No one open that time on the pattern. Yeah, Jeff Jones ran him out of bounds. The big senior defensive lineman at 6'4", 250. He showed good speed at chasing Tarver out of bounds. But overall, not a bad play by Tarver. Instead of forcing the issue, by throwing the ball into coverage, Tarver took it down and got whatever positive yardage he could out of the play. That's a heady move by Tom Tarver. Rutgers third down, eight. Oh! Scarlet Knights at the Michigan State 30. Under two minutes remaining in this third quarter. Michigan State 24, Rutgers 10. Here's Tarver to throw. Now he's in trouble. Gets away momentarily. Still has the ball. It's crushed. 32-yard line, Carlos Jenkins nearly beheaded Tom Tarver and one of the Rutgers players down. It looks like Donald Forbes, and you don't want to lose him. He's been an outstanding player for the Knights on the offensive let's, line. Let's watch it here. The offensive line has done such a great job, but there's one of those stunts that Michigan State is so famous for. They cross up the middle. That time, Jeff Jones looping around Bobby Wilson, who took the inside rush. Jones came back to where Wilson used to be. He was coming pretty well free, which even though he didn't make the tackle, he forced Tarver to pull the ball down, and then Junkins put Tarver away. You've got to feel, as they take a look at Donald Forrest, it's like something around the ankle area or the shin. Hopefully, he'll be okay. Rutgers faced with a fourth down and 10. The Knights will go for it here. Too far, at, I would at, think, well, for, at this for point of the game, yeah, you know, what they could possibly gain by punting here is really not much. You have to try for the coffin corner kick, which 
from this angle and this place of the field is going to be tough to do. Certainly too long for a field goal. You're down two touchdowns. You're the big underdog. You've got nothing to lose. Yeah, you've got to go for it in this situation. And they're still attending to Donald Forbes. 24 to 10, Michigan State on top. But it was not that way, folks, in the first half. 10-10 our score at halftime. Rutgers playing Michigan State dead even. But here in the second half, the Spartans have really asserted themselves and have gone on two long touchdown drives to take the lead by 14. And Forbes is up. And uh, let's take a look at it again. There he is, right at the bottom of your screen there, number 77. Let's see if we can see what happens right now. Oh, the player just collapses right on his knee. Oh, number 92, Jeff Jones blocked right into the side of Donald Forbes' knee. I don't like to see it, Luke. Ow, ow, ow. He is putting a little bit of weight on the knee, though. And that is a good sign. I hope so. As far as an injury to the ligaments would be concerned. But again, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Hopefully that young man will be all right. Don Forbes, uh, not only a fine football player, but a fine young man. And an excellent job in the truck, by the way, by our guys to isolate that. Jeff Jones is 6'4", 250 pounds, coming down on that knee. Ooh. Here we go, fourth down, 10. For Rutgers, look how many plays you have in the playbook. Fourth down and 10. Here we go, receivers, twin receivers to the left. Carver with one back behind him, and he's back to throw. Blitz. Heavy rush, fires, has him. See, the shot Scott was just clean by Chuck Pulo. He made the catch, though, to his credit. It's short, and Michigan State takes over on that. Well, you know, you question why a guy catches a ball for six or seven yards when they need 10 or 12 yards. What Rutgers was hoping to do was to catch the guy on the run here. Chuck Bullock would have just nothing to do with it. My God, that's middle linebacker play. What you're hoping to do is hit Scott in stride, make the middle linebacker miss. Folks, it wasn't in the card for Rutgers on that play. Take over, minute 16 remaining in the third, and they're up by 14. Sometimes you're in the huddle and you say, please don't call that play, please don't call that play. You don't say anything like that, but you think it, I'll tell you. And in motion, he knows to duck it, cuts back, up the middle, stays on his feet, and is cracked down at the 35. You know, in recent years, uh, excuse me, Michigan State has had a tradition of excellent tailbacks. They had Lorenzo White after Lorenzo White. They had Blake Eagle, who rushed for 199 yards against Rutgers in East Lansing, even though Michigan State lost. And now this kid, Tico Duckett, they say, might be the best of them all. 5'11", 185 pounds, only a sophomore. He's got lots of football ahead of him. The Michigan State coaching staff is very high on him. Second down, one. Here's the give. Duckett. He spins. Close to first down yardage. Marty Mays and Jamil Jackson in on the tackle. And only 25 seconds remaining here in this third quarter. Michigan State in command right now. Let's go Duckett coming out. And Highland Hickson going in. What a luxury for a coach. Can you imagine you take one guy out, the quality of of a uh, Tico Duckett, and you put another guy in like Highland Hickson? And they won't get this playoff. That's the end of the third quarter. So we play three quarters complete at Giant Stadium to score. Michigan State 24, Rutgers 10. Fitness equipment. Reps, reps. Fitness Supply has everything and anything you need to stay in shape. At low prices. Reps. Quality home gym. At low prices. Free weight equipment. For Rigno plates, just 49 cents a pound. The most complete line of aerobic equipment. Reps. Has fitness fashions for everyone. The best in sports nutrition. And nobody sells it for less. Reps. Fitness Supply. East Main Street, Somerville. Call 526-RETS. U.S. number one hobby is celebrating the grand opening of its South Plainfield store. It's U.S. number one hobby for all your hobby needs. Open seven days a week. That's U.S. number one hobby. Call 754-7788.
Welcome back to Giant Stadium for the fourth quarter. Rutgers finds himself down by 14 points now as we head into quarter number four. It was 10-10 at the half, 24-10 now, and Michigan State with a third down and one at the 35-yard line. Well, Michigan State is doing, a, doing to Rutgers what Rutgers did to Colgate a couple of weeks ago, wearing them down, big physical superiority in the offensive line. Colgate played well against Rutgers early. Rutgers played well against Michigan State early, but true size and talent eventually wins out. Though. This is a first down carry for Highland Hickson. Nope, maybe not. He needed to get a yard, and it is a first down. First down, Michigan State. It's interesting, they gave it to him even without the measurement. I thought that was a lot closer than uh, that warranted them just giving the first down. There's an interesting uh, sitting position here at Giant Stadium. When well, you're that size, you can get away with it. But <laughs> I don't think I could fit under that anymore. <laughs> first down at Ted for the Spartans at the 36-yard line. Michigan State has just taken over here in the second half. Oh. Pounding it right at Rutgers. Well, same play once again, Lou. I mean, it, there's really nothing fancy about it. The Michigan State offensive lineman making contact driving the Rutgers defender any way he wants to go, and then the back reading the hole. Watch it. Really nothing fancy here. Pretty much straight ahead blocking, and then a good cut back by Hickson. In this case, Duckett has done the same thing. There's really nothing that fancy about it. You've got a big, aggressive offensive line, and you have backs who run with their eyes as well as the feet. You make positive yardage. Rushing yards this half. Rutgers 26. Michigan State 102. So the Knights after winning the first half statistically, are behind statistically here in the second half and behind as well by the score. Here's the give up the middle to Tico Duckett. And he has positive yardage, looks to be enough for Michigan State first down. A lot of, uh, a lot of new Rutgers players in there also. I see Corey Kozak is in, I see Joe Ciffoni is in. So right now, uh, Doug Graber trying to get some of his players a little bit more seasoned playing against top flight competition. And I'm not saying that Doug Graber is throwing in a towel by any means, but he wants to season some of these players for later on in the year. I think he's also trying to get some fresh players in there too, up to being worn down the first three quarters. Good point, it's playing against that massive offensive line. Rich Rachel, you just saw, one of the Rutgers assistant coaches. On the delay handoff, not much there. Louis Beto makes the tackle. That's what Rutgers has to do right now. They've got to play a little bit more aggressive off, uh, excuse me, defensively. They can't allow Michigan State to continually take the game to them. You've got to fire some linebackers, maybe get a safety blitz in there, try to get the Michigan State backs in the backfield. Be a fly in the ointment. Try, try to be a little bit more aggressive, break up their blocking schemes, get in the backfield. Second down, 12. to throw play action fires and has a receiver catch is made and that's a michigan state first down on the catch for the spartans mark mcfarland backup wide receiver and they'll move the sticks mcfarland did a nice job he ran ron allen off the football watch it right here and then comes back for the throw number 17 right there they clear out the zone they use one player to run down the field so that the safety has to watch him, that the other wide receiver will break off his pattern and come back to the football. Good execution on the offense by State. First and 10 at the 39-yard line. Here's Highland, actually Tico Duckett. And that, after a two-yard gain, Sean Williams comes up to make the tackle. That's the way you want to do it for Rutgers. You want to string that play out and not let him cut back. Now watch the Rutgers defenders using their hands. That's why you want the big bench press. You've got to use that arm strength, keep the offensive players off you, then put that helmet in there and drive him back off the football. That's the way to play defense against that kind of running play. Second down and seven. 36-yard line. Don Forbes, the report strained left ankle. He knows the throw, has a receiver. Get his made. It's Brian Smolinski. And he 
pushes ahead for yet another Spartan first down. Lou, I've got to wonder whether or not Ron Allen is really playing at 100%. Usually he's a more aggressive defender and a better tackler than he's shown us here tonight. And he came in with a very, very short so shoulder, and I'm not making excuses for him, but normally, even though he's smallish, a very sure tackler. He has not showed that tonight. And Rutgers with their backs against the wall here. They really cannot allow any more scoring if they're to have a chance to come back here in this fourth quarter. Highland hits a couple of neat cuts. And he's down to the 22-yard line where the Knights pile up on him there. Louis Beto, Andrew Beckett, also Jay Bellamy in on the play. A lot of Rutgers players actually Malik Jackson too. Well, good gang tackling. Now watch this nice, nice, nice cut by Hickson. But when you're a play aggressively def defensively, the saying is you want to put hats on the football, which means you want to swarm to the ball at all times. When you do that, you can make up for one missed tackle because there's five guys to back you up. Second down, six, 11th play of the drive, and Michigan State has shoot up six minutes. Tico Duckett. Ron Allen tripped him up inside the 10 yard line. Tico Duckett is one impressive running back. He hasn't even really, he doesn't even appear to be breathing that heavily, and I don't want to take anything away from him because he's been running hard. But look at this hole here, Lou. Again, this is an end sweep, great blocking at the point of attack. All he has to do is make one cut, high step, one down defender, and then head for the end zone. Folks, when you've got that kind of room to run, it's not that hard. Michigan State calls Todd out. They want to talk it over, and we'll take one as well. Breaking the action, 10 minutes, 18 seconds remaining here in the fourth quarter. Michigan State 24, Rutgers 10. Imagine your home with a fireplace from East Coast Fireplace. East Coast Fireplace can give a new elegant look to almost any room in your house. Come see our incredible showroom and pick out exactly the look you want. Whether it's brick, stone, or marble, East Coast is the number one choice for fireplaces. Stoves, glass doors, and all your fireplace needs. East Coast features a complete line of products from Superior Fireplace and Cultures Stone. East Coast Fireplace, 729 Route 18, East Brunswick, New Jersey. For information on our free in-home consultation, call 390-0404. Attention New Jersey Ford buyers, introducing Island Ford, New York City's volume retail Ford dealer, just five minutes from New Jersey and a whole lot more. We've got 400 new and used cars and trucks for you to choose from. And our prices are better, our deals are better, and so is our personal service. Plus, you pay only 7% sales tax. New Jersey, Island Ford will pay your tolls to come cross the bridge. So come see what value and hassle-free buying really means. Ford. Island Ford. There's a look at the goal line, which Michigan State is planning to cross, I would think. As well, they've been very frequent visitors yeah. to that very area quite a bit here in the second half. Look. The ball is at the six-yard line, and they are looking to blow this one wide open. First and goal. Tylan Dixon. Down at the three. Jay Bellamy again in there, also to be... Louis Beto and Justin Kennedy also, number seven. Mike in. Spitzer got a hand in there also, was in the backfield, just couldn't rip, uh, wrap up Highland Hicks. And he's the kind of guy you've got to put a shoulder to and you've got to wrap him up. Arm tackles won't do against a 220 pounder. Here it is on the replay. You see Spitzer there, just ripped through the tackle. But look at that Jay Bellamy. He's a true freshman. Boy, he can come up and smack you. I like that, I like it. Here's the pitch. Hickson hit at the two and driven back at the one. Andrew Beckett came up first. I tell you, Andrew Beckett, 237 pounds. He laid a shot on Highland Hickson. Hickson just kind of shrugged that one off and kept heading towards the goal line. Luckily, uh, Beckett had some help from some of his friends here. Watch this, watch this collision. This is linebacker play. Boom, right there. But look at Hickson still drive to the goal line until Jay Bellamy just finally cleans him up. I like that kid Bellamy. He is not afraid to stick his face in there. Jay from Mattawan, New Jersey, a true freshman. It is 
Third down and goal at the two. There's the Spartan. He's happy with a real Spartan shot. Hickson hit behind the line of scrimmage and gang tackle. Nice job by the Rutgers defense. The Jackson brothers make the play. You know why that's a, a real nice job by the defense? Sure, they stopped Michigan State from getting in, but trailing by 14 points in the fourth quarter shows character. There's no give up. Absolutely, no doubt about it. There's number 41, Jamil Jackson. Then 59, Louis Beto. And the brother Malik gets a piece of that action. That's good team defense by Rutgers. And believe me, it's no bunk. When the game is getting out of reach, you still must play with pride. Remember, it's a long season. This will come to help the Rutgers team later on. Hudlow kicks the 20-yard field goal. It's good. And a break in the action. 8.05 remaining in the fourth quarter. Michigan State 27 and Rutgers 10. Open the door to the racket place and you open the door to fast-paced racquetball, aerobics, strengthening and developing, or simple relaxation. You open the door to family fun. Just leave your children with us in our fabulous Tot Tender Center. Call today and we'll give you a free trial workout and $100 off your initiation fee. Now's the time to take the plunge and enter a world of fitness and fun at the racket place. We're located across from the marketplace on Route 34 in Matawan. Are you shopping for a house or condo? There's a new show you need to watch, Saturday mornings, 9.30. It's called For Sale by Owner. From the privacy of your living room, you'll tour over 40 homes, outside and inside. Nearly all are located in Middlesex, Union, Somerset, or Essex County, and they're all being offered for sale by the owners. No broker's commission involved, and that could mean big savings for you. Saturday mornings, 9.30 a.m. If you want to sleep in, tape it. Watch it later. Here's the scoreboard. It reads 27-10, Michigan State. Here's a high line drive kick taken by Antoine Moore at the 20. He's to the 30, to the 35, and Rutgers will put the ball in play at the 36-yard line. Down by 17 here in the fourth quarter, eight minutes remaining. And right now, sure, the game is in the hands of Michigan State, but I'm sure that Head coach Doug Graber is looking for the Knights to do something positive on offense. As good as Rutgers looked on offense in the first half, uh, they have sputtered here in the second half. Yeah, but Lou, you have eight minutes left on the clock. Much, much too much time to be saying that this game is over. Long uphill struggle ahead for Rutgers, but uh, ain't over till the fat lady sings. High formation. Tarver back to throw. He's in trouble and tripped up. That is a terrific individual effort. Bill Johnson not only showed strength, but great speed right there as he got around the Rutgers blocker. 6'4", 282-pound junior out of Chicago. Uh, what a great matchup between him and Alan Mitchell. That's like the battle of the behemoths. Mitchell at 290, Johnson at 282. That time, believe it or not, Johnson outquicked him. That's hard to believe that at 282 pounds he would have that kind of quickness. But that's why he has the potential to be a great one. He's got another uh, year of eligibility left. Loss of four. Second down, 14. Tarver, Antoine Moore tries to get to the outside and does pick up a couple. Carlos Jenkins, who's been all over the field. Yeah, he's been rather ubiquitous. This is the situation that Doug Graber wanted to avoid. Obviously, he would rather not have his team down 27-10. That's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is Rutgers in obvious passing situations. Michigan State just too good on defense, particularly the defensive line, for Rutgers to not have any deception involved in their offense. And right now, there is none. They have to throw the football. Third down and nine. Harvard. Dumps it off, Antoine Moore makes the catch. But he's cleaned at the 40-yard line. Carlos Jenkins and also Alan Haller coming up to make the tackle, and the Knights will have to punt the football away. Let's watch it on the replay. Rutgers offensive line does a pretty good job of picking up the stunting Michigan State defense, but this play, in a situation like this, just isn't going to get it done for you. The problem with the Rutgers offense tonight, Lou, is they have not stretched the defense. They have not challenged them with a long pass at any time throughout the ballgame. So Michigan State just not this, just, just, just does not receive.
respect Rutgers' deep abilities. Good job by the punter, David Dunn, to handle the snap, and then a long kick. And still on his feet is Brian Winters. I mean, that, that's got to be the best five-yard return I've ever seen. <laughs> it's certainly up there. You know, Winters, a true freshman for Michigan State, and that's a rarity on the Spartan squad, but you see what kind of ability that he has. I'll tell you, what a great effort for five yards. It's a young kid who wants to catch the coach's eye and say, hey, what do you say, Coach Perlis? I can get it done, too. Well, uh, give me some playing time here. By the way, I'd like to wish a happy birthday to Doug Graber this past Wednesday. I'm sure it would be much happier if we had a win here tonight, but I think he's got a lot of positive things to look forward to this season. No, this, he's, got this, he's got this Rutgers program heading in the right direction. I'll, I will say that. Most assured. First down and 10. Nico Duck is heading in the right direction right now. This is across the 50-yard line. Oh, man, did you see the way he froze Marshall Roberts, who's a really excellent open field tackle? He did a little quick feet, little dance step move. We used to call that the old Aztec two-step. Froze Roberts. Watch this on the end zone replay. First, a great cut here, great speed. Now watch it coming up right here. Do -doop, do -doop. Goodbye. <laughs> man, that's a nifty move. Oh, Duck, I like that. Duck it. 203 yards rushing in this game. He had 144 on the season coming in. Michigan State obviously on their way to their first win. Here's Duckett again, still on his feet, bounces down to the 45-yard line. And the clock running at 5.50 remaining in the game. I'm sure that Coach Graber would really like to see his defense play tough throughout the entire game. Right now, the the outcome of the game, not certainly not entirely in question, but you still must play with pride, especially on defense. That time, if Duckett would have run with his head up a little bit more and taken it one cut, one hole to the inside, he would have gotten even more yardage. Could you, how can you fault a guy that's got 200 yards on it on an evening? Second and seven at the 45. Pitch outside, Tyler Dixon puts his head down and just bulldozes his way through the Rutgers defense. He's got a Michigan State first down inside the 40-yard line. See, I see something in Rutgers right now that I really don't like, Lou, and the fact that they're playing back on their heels right now. The white shirts are completely taking it to the red. Now watch this. All the Rutgers players back on their heels. Now watch Hickson deliver the blow right here. Look at the, look at the Rutgers player flat on his back, and that's Jay Bellamy, an excellent hitter. I know Hickson's 220 pounds, it ain't easy, but that's what this game is all about, is playing aggressively for 60 minutes. Huge chunk of yardage once again for Tico Duckett inside the 30-yard line. Second down and three. Rutgers shuffling in some more shirts here, but watch this. Rutgers just standing around too much. They're entirely too high. Football is a game of leverage, Lou. You've got to get low. That's why these guys have those huge thighs and powerful hips and backsides because they've got to be able to get low, drive into the defender. Rutgers standing up and standing around right now. Second and three, up to 29. Hickson, big hole. 20 penalty marker, though, on the play. Well, I think Rutgers is going to take a, catch a break here with a holding penalty going against Michigan State. Clock stopped at 3.59. Let's watch it here on the replay. Coming right into your living room. Highland Hicks, and look at that hole. Does a little, uh, little Aztec two-step move there, a little stutter step move, and then he's finally taken down. But Rutgers finally catches a break. Maybe, uh, maybe the Zebras can stop Michigan State because the Scarlets have not been able to do it here in the second half. The ball marked at the 39-yard line. Second down and 12. A lot of Rutgers people getting some, some quality playing time here because I tell you, George Perlis has not called off the dogs here in the second half. He's got his first unit in there, and they're playing hard. They're going to play all the way. On the delay. Across the 35-yard line is Highland Hickson. 
He's a senior out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. A lot of Florida players on this Michigan State roster. Oh, a lot of Florida players all over the place. They're excellent. There, it's like a little sprint draw as Enos makes like he's going to sprint out to his left and hands the ball to his fullback coming back against the grain. They ran it well against Syracuse. They ran it pretty well against Notre Dame, and they've run it very well here against Rutgers all night. Third down, nine. At the 35, there's Dan Enos. Considered by many to be the one, maybe the finest quarterback in the Big Ten this year. And he can get the duck it. Another penalty right there on the play. Duck it's inside the 25. Nothing fancy here. Just a lot of straight ahead football for Michigan State. That's a third and eight situation. Michigan State blowing Rutgers right off the football. Running for a first down on third and eight. I'll tell you right now. Don't like to say it, it could catch some heat for it, but the way Rutgers is playing right now, there's an old slogan, Lou, put a fork in them, they're done. Gotta come back here, two minutes and 55 seconds left to play here in the ball game. Gotta play with pride, remember, what you do here helps down the road. The penalty was against Rutgers, Lou, so it's gonna be marched off, let's see, even after the play. What we got here, personal foul? Down to the 19 yard line, and the Spartans will look to push in another score with under three minutes remaining in the game. Well, the fans that came out to Giants Stadium tonight saw an excellent first half, and I'm sure the Rutgers fans are a little disappointed by the second half, but Rutgers showed some good things, I thought, tonight. They, they lost to a bigger, more physically talented ball club, and that's really what it comes down to. Hickson inside the 15-yard line. Actually, they'll mark it just outside at the 16. Louis Beto over to make the tackle. Excellent athlete. Really, really good athlete. 6'2", about 195 pounds. And here's another good athlete, Highland Hickson. God, look at big number 77. Doesn't get the block, though. Louis Beto did a nice job with the old Matador move, but did not lose position. He used a little quickness. Got rid of Moten, the big offensive lineman coming right at him, and slid off the block and made the tackle. That's a nice play by Louis Beto. Second down, seven. Ball marked at the 16-yard line. Duckett this time grabbed down. Justin Kennedy comes up to make the tackle. That's a nice play by Kennedy. It's a real good play by Justin Kennedy. Try to get in the backfield. There's the safety in there, making tackles at the line of scrimmage. Let's face it, Michigan State's not going to throw the ball. Get your safeties up there. Get in somebody's face and make a hit. Nice job. Plays off the block of the fullback, that's number 49, John McDougall, who's in there for Michigan State. Kennedy did a nice job of taking on the block, sliding off of it, and making the tackle. That's a good looking defensive play by Justin Kennedy. Under two minutes remaining in the game. Spartans third down and five at the 14 yard line. Here's Highland kicks in, turns it in, and he needed to get to about the nine for a first down. I think he's gonna be marked with the 10. Actually, just outside the 10, as you can see there. Let's watch it here on the replay. Highland Hicks, and again, same kind of thing. Sprint out action, hand the ball to your running back to cut against the grain. Let him choose the hole. The offensive lineman just hit the defender, maintain con contact, let the running back choose the hole. Interesting that uh, Michigan State has not lifted any of its first teamers here in the fourth quarter, and they are going to go for it on fourth down and two at the 11 yard line. Very, very interesting call by George Burles here. Mm -hmm. This could have serious repercussions in the years to come if and when Rutgers is to meet Michigan State once again. Some of the Rutgers fans are booing Michigan State. Give up the middle, up, and down to the two yard line is Highland Hickson. Highland Hickson. And with under a minute remaining, Michigan State wants another touchdown. Well, you know, Lou, I will say one thing. Now watch this hole again. It's the same kind of play. Sprint out action, and the quarterback gives to the running back against the grain. Huge hole. And whenever you've got holes like that, you see backs hurtling over defenders because they're running with such confidence. But Lou, I, I never, I say never pull off the dog. You play 60 minutes. You play from whistle to whistle. You can't make the tackle. That's too bad. Well, we're down to 30 seconds, and Michigan State the first and goal. And they try to push it in. Touchdown, Spartans. Rollin on the carry for Michigan State. And it's 33 to 10. A 
the Rutgers fans let the Spartans hear it on that one. Again, we we'll sure that that's a home crowd thing, and you know, made there's something will be made of it in the paper. Take a look at it here on the replay. Getting some action in there. That's number 22, Tony Rollin, back up tailback, third string tailback. They get some action here. But hey, I know if I was coaching, you know, I, I might not, I might not throw a 60-yard pass in a situation like this. No, I might not. But then again, I might if my quarterback needed some work and throwing some long passes. It's a 60-minute game. I'm going to hit hard on the opening whistle. I'm going to hit hard on the closing whistle and everything in between. It's the way you have to play, Lou. Michigan State leads it 34 to 10. Just 25 seconds left in the game. The drive for Michigan State, 11 plays, 68 yards, six minutes and one second. Rollin, the one yard run, caps it off. Michigan State drives this half, nine plays, 68 yards, seven plays, 79 yards, 14 plays, 70 yards, and 11 plays, 68 yards. Three touchdowns and a field goal for the Spartans here in the second well, half. 24 no unanswered points, Lou, just about says it all. I mean, the Michigan State Spartans, and all to their credit, really really, really took it to the Rutgers Scarlet Knights here in the second half. But I tell you, we can't analyze it any more than that. They just blew Rutgers off the ball, dominated at the line of the scrimmage with two excellent tailbacks running behind a huge offensive line. It's just that simple. You don't have to say any more about it than that. Though. Michigan State will enter Big Ten play next week. One, one, and one. They'll take on Iowa. And the Spartans will get their first victory of the season. Lou, I have to honestly say, what did they come in, ranked 20, 22 in the country, 22 nationally? They're a lot better than 22nd, believe me. I would be very surprised if this team doesn't finish in the top 15 or the top 10 nationally by the end of the year. There's a high kick to Gary Melton at the 5. He's to the 20 and bang down there at the 22, with just 20 seconds remaining in the game. Myron Bell makes the tackle for Michigan State. I want to thank our statistician tonight, Tom Sharkey. Did an excellent job once again for us. And a great job of makes spotting. Makes uh, sound so intelligent. He, he does, I know. We, he, he, people don't see all these little file cards that we get with all that information from Tom Sharkey. I'd also like to put a nice plug in for Bill Rogan, who helps doing some spotting and some additional statistical work. The, the, man's, a, the man's a sports machine. <laughs> Both of them. They, they, they're, in a, they're in a league all by themselves. Here's Bill Chesna who gets a play here, throws long, and it's caught by Brantley. Chris Brantley made that catch, and I can't figure out how. He didn't know we near the ball when it came down. Well, he, 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 he turned about six times. He's probably a little bit dizzy from having to, having to turn so many times. 13 seconds remaining, and the ball is at the 35-yard line. Chesna calls timeout. With 13 seconds remaining, Chesna calls timeout. He'll go over and talk it over. Thought that pass was going to be intercepted, but Brantley makes the catch. Well, let's talk about uh, some things that are happening in the future. Let's take a look at the play first. Here it is. Now, watch how many times that Brantley has to turn to locate this ball. Is once. Now he turns back the other way. That's twice. Oh, there it is. I got it. I got it. <laughs> Go ahead, Lou, what, did you, what, what points did you want to bring up here? Uh, just a couple of points about the schedule, really. Rutgers is back to Eastern football next week against Boston College. They'll then take on Pitt, who lost today to West Virginia, by the way. The Panthers are supposed to be beasts of the East. They are not that way so far. They have struggled. Real up and down. They got blown out by a, by a terrific Oklahoma team. And I mean blown out. And speaking of blown out, most of, our cousin. most of our crowd has blown blown out of the stadium at this point. No breeders on the, on the, on the schedule for Rutgers either. Down. Penalty flag also. Clock stopped with seven seconds remaining. And we were talking about Pitt and then Syracuse also. We won't see Rutgers again here on our TKR Sports Productions anyway until the Akron Zips come to town. Jerry Fast. So three weeks in between our next game. A lot can happen in that time. Yeah. I'll tell you, Rutgers has shown signs about being on the right track, Lou. I mean, this is a disappointing loss. You know, 34 points this week, 28 points last week. But they were there, you know, they showed some good signs. Uh, they've improved in areas where they needed to improve. 
Do they have more to go? They sure do to play the likes of Michigan State, I'll tell you that right now. But there are signs of life at the Shadow. Incomplete, and the game is over. That's it from Giant Stadium. Some of the Rutgers fans give the start of night nice and the final score. Michigan State 34, Rutgers 10, and back with some closing thoughts in just a few moments. Night Thoroughbred Racing at the Meadowlands. place with winners 10 times a night. Has this ever happened to you? The car was just fixed and it's still stalled. Uh-oh. At STS, we pride ourselves in doing the work right the first time. They promised that my car would be ready by four. At STS, your car is ready when promised. What are these extra charges? We never discussed all this. Well, we meant to tell you. At STS, you pay only for what you authorize. Service Guard, only at STS. The pain is in my very, very lower back, and it just aches. Today, Ray Stewart is trying extra-strength Tylenol gel caps. For pain like his, why take aspirin or ibuprofen when nothing works better than Tylenol gel caps? The pain is totally gone. I have no pain in my back. From now on, I'm going to take Tylenol gel caps for my pain. I truly feel it's amazing. Tylenol gel caps, only from Tylenol. For everyday pain, nothing works better. And for your allergies, now try Tylenol Allergy Sinus. Has this ever happened to you? Or maybe this? Whatever your aching needs are, this is the place for you. Soterio Chiropractic Center. Don't you owe it to yourself for proper health care and nutrition? Not only do we have all the equipment for all your aches and pains, but also a 24-hour emergency service in case things like this happen to you. Please give us a call. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. 756-6688. Michigan State wins it by the score of 34 to 10. Spartans outstanding in the second and a half, and uh, they clearly were the better team, especially in the second half. Well, one of the best teams in the nation. We mentioned ranked 22nd going into the game. I honestly believe they will steadily improve that ranking as the season goes along. They just don't have any weaknesses, and uh, all, the, all the credit goes to them. Okay, a couple of quick positives for Doug Graver's club. Well, I, I thought Tom Tarver has shown signs of maturing every week. Had a great first half, a not-so-good second half. Young quarterbacks are going to be that way, up with one moment, down the next, but he has still shown positive signs of getting better every week. The offensive line, I thought, for Rutgers did an excellent job, even in the second half, against a very, very good defense. Defensively for Rutgers, there's still room for improvement. They've got to find a big play guy who can consistently do it week out and week in for the defense. All right, Michigan State wins it 34 to 10. Join us in three weeks. We'll be back on the 27th of October. Rutgers Akron, and we'll also have Rutgers Army later on this season as well. For Frank Labono and the rest of the TKR Cable Sports crew, did an excellent job once again here tonight. I'm Lou Brogno. Thanks for joining us from Giant Stadium. Again, the final, Michigan State 34 and Rutgers 10. next.